Sick. Do you have in mind um, odds, a place that you would like to fly today? How's about um, Iceland? That's like a great idea. It, or uh, Wait, the, the airport's called something else. Iceland Kepler Airport? Thick, I think. I forget. It's been a while. Right, well, yeah, let's, yeah, sure. <laughs> let's, let's go Let's go there. Um, or just like land in the middle of Reykjavik. That would be cool if that's a thing. All right, well, Lithros claims B-I-R-K. Reykjavik. Beautiful. And what direction you want to go in? Um, land tends to be more kind of interesting than water, but water's cool too. We could just fly around. Is Iceland tiny? Yeah, it's pretty small, I think. Um, land sounds good, or just checking out the land mass or whatever. Oh, and we can cross over to like this did other you, place? Uh, did you happen to install the mod that lets you fly around giant anime ladies? No, I don't know about that mod. Is that real? Uh, yeah. Are you yes. serious? <laughs> I have not heard of that mod. I've looked into the. I've looked into the mods. Oh, is that what it's called, Soren? NASA Anime Diddies mod. If that's oh, real, I will install it. No, I will. I mean, I can't install it right the second because I would have to like redo the game, like close yeah, it yeah. and do this shit. But, um, what type of plane would you like to fly? We have the oh. option of. Good planes and bad planes. Little fucker. What'd you say? I think I want the rickety little fucker. The Is one that he... looks like it's straight out of like North by Northwest. Okay, like, so prop duster, whatever you know, like the one with the double wings and the colorful shit. Okay, so that this uh, yellow one looks like that. Um, I'm gonna click that one. Oh yeah, that's pretty dope. Scan and see if there's an even more rickety looking. Oh yeah, well we could go with an actual double. That one's pretty cool. The red one, yeah. The red one. All right. Um, let me see if it has multiple skins. Oh, we do have different skins. We can go with oh, red, yeah. white, yellow. I like yellow. You like yellow? Yeah. Beautiful. Oh my god, Ari, Crusader Kings podcast, fucking yes. Oh my god. Ari, we could maybe co-play Crusader Kings or something? I love that game. I'm not that good at it, but I do love it. I always fly. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where we can get. Fucking do it, Lithros. You need to stream for us. I'm. I'm telling you, if we get an in-group sort of Twitch scene, all of our shit is going to explode because once there's a community, they're interacting. It will. It will pop. I'm just saying. We need to work out schedules for everyone. Oh yeah, yeah. We can host each other. I don't host oh, anyone. Yeah. If someone goes to my channel, I don't host anyone. I just don't have anyone I yet want to host. I want to try streaming. I just panic <laughs> when I have to set up and then I end up not doing it. Uh-huh. That's valid. Um, oh, so you have experienced the streaming uh, anxiety. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. More of that than I have actually streamed. Yeah. Uh, I have... Um, uh, P Zombie hosting is just if someone goes to my channel, then they see whoever else I'm hosting if they're alive. You know? Um, yeah, streaming anxiety. During some of my early streams, I would just get off so fried. Like, get off air just like freaking fried, you know? Hey, this is an attractive plane. It's oh, already... oh my god, are there paws on it? Is it the furry plane? Oh, wow, that's weird. I didn't pick that. Yeah, we got the furry plane. Oh, well, I'll accept it. It's kind of beautiful, Jesus honestly. Fuck. I just really like that color of the yeah. double wings. Looks oh, like yeah. a plane that Lupin the Third would fly, fly in. All right, so we're already having a bad time. Okay, we're up in the air. All right, How often up. do you usually mm -hmm. crash? Um, well, I have catastrophic crashes turned off. Look, it's just turning. I'm gonna have to turn on some UI, but it looks so cool with, with no UI. Doesn't it? Like. Oh, the wind is just taking me. Look at that weird building. That's cool. Wait, is this. Where did we. Where is this? We're in Reykjavik. Oh, wow. I do not recognize this at all. I'm bad at recognizing <clears throat> things, but well, yeah. Well, hold on. Looks like the US. <laughs> Let's make sure I didn't fuck up. No, we're. 
here's no, I, you're right. There it is. Yeah. If you know where I should go, let me know where I should go. Lauren said we should crash into the furry convention center. Um, I don't actually know of any landmarks there. I just kind of I was there for like two days once and yeah. checked out the city a little bit. And there's like some nice mountains, presumably volcanoes nearby. Are you seeing this logo on the side of the plane? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then it says Sam on it. What's on the Who other the side? Fuck is Sam. The previous owner, perhaps. Oh yeah, we're going straight up. I'm... Yeah, I read it scum too, Harry. Scum. Hold on, do it. I can make this without UI. I can make it. All right, we're up in the air. Uh, what does that little icon say down there? That says. I don't know. I don't even know what that says. Is the city... Like, are we at the city? I have no idea, to be honest. It doesn't look like it to me, but I guess that's... I mean, I guess that's what this... That, yeah, you're, like, behind the airport. That's probably it. I don't know. That's a lot more dense than I remember. Well, let's go across it or something. Um, by the way, I can also control the weather, which is very fun. Hell yeah! So I just switched it to live weather, which... It claims is this except for i made it daytime day. um and i can make it is it icy there oh uh, it depends on the time of year <laughs> um i think it gets icy later okay i just made it very terrifyingly cloudy let me fix that so that's I... amazing can't see shit yeah, yeah huh? all right i turned off the cloudy i don't know i'll make it icy i feel like in my head this is oh, what i oh, yeah. So check this shit out. We got ice on the window. What the fuck? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You can look out the window. Freak out. Oh yeah, you can look People through the floor. Right. Oh, can you? Yeah, look. Oh, that's not fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have this game in VR? I bet. Feels like yeah. it'd be good, uh, like exposure yeah. therapy for people who are scared of heights. I think this would be like a capstone project for people who are scared of heights. All oh, right, don't start here. I don't know if this would be the. I, well, it depends on your theory, I suppose. Um, these guys are talking about in-group streaming guild, streaming Toho practice and shit. Annoy you with my encyclopedic weeb knowledge? Yeah, dude, people love that shit. Um, Hades. Ghost Runner. I love Ghost Runner. I've streamed some Ghost Runner, and it's just extremely fun, except for you keep dying over and over again. Is it a roguelike, or are you just bad at it? Um, I, it's not a roguelike. I guess I'm bad at it, <laughs> if those are the options. <laughs> um, where should we go, Goblin? Give me... The, the options are towards the mountains. Yeah. Towards the sun. Towards the sun or towards no, the mountains? No, fuck, fuck the sun. Mountains. Fuck, fuck the sun. Towards the mountains we go. This is awesome. In this little plane. Ari would love to fuck the sun. It's powerful. Damn, we've got some intense opinions about immersion <laughs> therapy in therapy. chat. <laughs> I feel like immersion therapy is probably wholesome. I don't know. I mean, I can subjectively say that some some things that seem to be exposure therapy have worked for me, even though they weren't in like a clinical setting or anything. Maybe not worked, but helped. Yeah. Hello, Aizazadi. Welcome. <laughs> the, uh, what did you, can I ask about it? Oh, yeah. Um... What did I you think that get the only thing it's been helpful for so far has been needles. I used to be like extremely needle phobic, like you know, vision would start to black out, needle phobic, oh, wow. and um, now it's down to just like you know, feeling like I might pass out slightly <laughs> and then being fine in a much shorter span of time. That is way better. Yeah. Soren got over a fear of heights by getting a job that required me to climb ladders. Um, I never quite had needle phobia. I sort of uh habitually like have to look at it though oh yeah i definitely try to look at it anytime they inject me with anything yeah 
I think uh, Isla mentioned this on um, Twitter at one point too, but we both have the thing where like, we'll start freaking out when, as soon as the, the what do you call it? Antibacterial swab goes on, that cold yep. feeling. That's like what really triggers the terror, which is kind of funny. Right. Well, it's just the, it's just a reliable indicator. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I love that feeling, says Oyster. I do kind of like it. I would like it theoretically, except for the association. Right. What this reminds me of is when I realized, when I smelled alcohol wipes and became hungry for barbecue ribs. That's fucking hilarious. Is that how you know you're spending too much time at the bar? <laughs> you're right, something like that. Look at the in group too closely. I don't know what the hell you get. Oh, this is white people joke. I see. Oh, I just okay, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Do you look? Have... There are a lot of Europeans in a group. Yeah, that's true. Um, dude, there's so much ice on this thing. See, okay, so by the way, with this ga game, all these switches do stuff. Um, I just am not good at using them, but like one of them might be like a de icer or something. Yeah, you might need to turn on a heater in there or something. Yeah. No smoking, it says. I don't know. I don't know how to de-ice that Yeah, shit. press all the buttons. <laughs> I mean, shut off fuel. We're not going to press that. Um, throttle control, mixture control. Don't know what that is. Propeller RPM control. Are those all just to make you go faster? I, I tried to have the, oh, the magneto. Who knows what that is? Altimeter calibration. One of these has got to be a de-icer. Chad is losing their mind because you're not pressing the buttons. Uh, yeah, I used to just press all the buttons. Mixture control. Pitch trim. I like that this just got a little thingy. Oh god, look at this. This is the trim. You guys happy? You guys happy? Who dead? We got a sub gift. Uh-oh, I fucked up my trim though. Hold on, I'll talk about the sub gift. <laughs> nose, nose medium. Not... Yeah, yeah, is there an ejector cord? <laughs> oh god, I'm flying directly down. Okay. I somehow You're fine. Me. This looks like one of those planes that can like skim on water, right? Uh no. <laughs> okay. Look at it. It doesn't have skis. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean I'm not it doesn't look like it to me. I I mean if it looks like it to you, who am I to to reject what you say it looks like to you. I can't know that. I know a lot about planes. Yeah. I Didn't you bring me onto your show because of my deep plane knowledge? Yeah, let's talk about your plane knowledge. Uh, how did you become so interested in planes? Well, when I was a small child, I, uh, I was in a plane crash. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, no, I don't know shit about planes. I'm sorry. But since the plane crash, how is this? How I was not in the plane crash. <laughs> no, but I heard that about the plane crash. Oh, okay. Wait. It was explosive oh, and deadly. Soren says if you hit the water at a thirty degree angle, you'll skip it. Yeah, that's true. So I so basically I can't really crap so by the way, I turn in the actual game, if you turn too intensely, you will like crash. Like it'll like end the run. Um, but I turned some of that off, like just because, like, just the 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 wind on your, you know, plane will like rip it in half and stuff. Um, That's dope. It's like tr it's like a real thing. Oh, by the way, look, we're like frozen in there. I don't know if you see the. Uh... Is that a dog? No, no, no. That's a human. Are you sure? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, you've got a bun. It could be a furry. It just seems to be a person with a bun. <laughs> Named Sam, perhaps. Yeah, totally covered in ice. I mean, this plane is just, like, frozen. The good thing you don't need to be able to see out of it to fly it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay, let's get back on track. Goodness, chat. Goodness. Mile High you Club. Install the furry mod. I will install cool mods if they exist. I've looked into it, but a lot of the mods, they're just for nerds who like flight simulators, which it's just like, Grease is more accurate now. I don't 
know what I wish I was surprised. Yeah. Um, what what's on your mind? Time? The goblin odds. Oh god. Um, it's really hot, so I'm extremely distracted by that. And it's pretty much otherwise head empty, no thoughts. Nice. You can see, like, classical Greece are the worst. It's true. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, Iceland moo twitches. There's got to be some way to let chat fuck with your plane. Somebody must have made that. Oh, that's so interesting. I, I don't know, dude. Like, I have watched... By the way, there are people who actually fly planes on Twitch. Like, real planes. Is that legal? I think so. I mean, you can... Yeah, they just have a camera and some way to do Wi-Fi. Twitch plays flight sim. Honestly, dude, if people find stuff like that, just send me what you got. I mean, I would try stuff. By the way, look at my... the. The propeller is like glitching out. Too it's much ice. Covered in ice. Twitch would just crash your plane over and over again, but I'd be fine with that. <laughs> My big disappointment when I first saw this game is that you don't like go down in a fiery blast. It's just sort of like it just ends. Out. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot that's missing. Um, being able to shoot things, you know what I mean. Very important feature. Being able to crash into humans and like splitting them in half with your propellers. Oh, just like a mi a red mist. <laughs> yeah. I need to be able to red mist people in every game I play. <laughs> That's right. Ideally you should be able to spawn paratroopers and just fly through them. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like a flock of them, like in V formation. Yeah. I guess that would be yeah. You go through the whole line like Sonic goes through rings. Yeah, exactly. Joe Mama, get wrecked. <laughs> wrecked, Soren. <laughs> Corzy wears a powered exoskeleton. Call that a parasocial relationship. And the robot Corzy. <laughs> I like that you're using the laughing guy, Aerie. Here, let's try to get close to the ground. I, it's just stressing me out that the propeller is acting weird, even though it's not going to do anything to our thoroughly frozen... Okay, in my head cannon, the, the plane is just covered in uh, powdered sugar. Very nice, like Candyland plane. Yeah. Yeah, it feels very Christmassy. It's got a good vibe. Yeah. I could put on Christmas music. Oh, fuck yeah. Well, do you have, like, traditional Christmas music, though? And none of that secular bullshit? I mean, I have pretzelrocks.com copyright free <laughs> that might actually be the good shit then all right let's try it out let's go for a christmas vibe um helpfully called here holiday i believe is there a way to listen to the music without getting the echo of listening to you actually and listening to twitch the only way, honestly, to do it is go to Pretzel Rocks and play it in your earphones. Got it. Um, pretzel. Play dot pretzel. Actually, there's links in the techno? chat. Techno. This does seem to be techno. Yeah, Gaudi tastes last. Prester knows what's up. I figured Prester had good taste in nice Christian um, Christmas music. The rude snowstorm. Fuck. <laughs> this is kind of a weird vibe. Oh, I see. It's like techno. What song is that? Good King Wen Circles. Old Lang Syne? Is that a Christmas song? Area, are you trolling us right now? Is that what you're trying to do? You're trolling us live on stream? What are you laughing at, Vecton? Yeah, New Year's. Hey, God, what stats did you roll when you were born? Low ones. <laughs> Come on. Uh, are we ranking the stats, or do I have to sign numbers? I can't remember what the normal ones are, and like at what point you're officially brain dead or dead dead or whatever. Right. Well, we got 
I mean, for D and D, strength, dex, con. Yeah. Wisdom. I just never know the relative yeah. numbers. But they expect that. Wait, a ten? That's isn't that below the human average? Mm, I think the average is. I can't remember if the average 11. is like nine or if it's like twelve. Lithros will know this. Okay, yeah, Lithros. What's the average human? Uh, oh, okay. I'm fine with that then. D and D terms three to eight. Oh, okay. I thought three to eighteen was average. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, then. Um, how many points do I have to allocate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should, should, <laughs> should we actually do this? Should we have you roll your stats and then allocate I, them to sure, you? Sure. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> All right, hold on. If I could just get this plane it's to fly. Not point by. I don't know how to do it if it's not point by. Do we have just like a standard number of life? Or... <laughs> We're just doing it randomly. And the lowest one goes to Constitution. I... Oh my god! I just bought really pretty dice. I can go grab them. Yeah, grab your dice. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. How about this music? I gotta turn on the UI so I can freaking see what's going on. Plain okay. control wise. Shit, I grabbed the wrong thing. Wait. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Fly and save. Alright, how are we doing? Let's get some. Uh, Alright, the engine is on maximum. We like that. Let's okay, you will appreciate it. Oh, yeah, wait. Which is lighting, so I can't tell if it's easily visible. But this is my oh, goblin. Oh my god, the goblin. Hello, Water Without Fish. Thank you for the follow. The goblin. Wait, I'm about to hit this mountain here. <laughs> Metaphorical roll. Yeah, it's fucking bad. Roll a d20? No, that can't be right. It's a 318. What the fuck? Oh, 3d6. I'm gonna find it. Wait, oh, d6 is the normal one. On. I'm gonna tr check out this sick die though. Oh, it's that's very cool. Very fancy. I like it. Oh, my frame rate's fucked. I can actually do something here. Let me try something. I can reduce. I'm gonna try to reduce the bit rate. You'll be smoother, but less um, detailed. <laughs> okay, yeah. Should I grab my camera and try to show the dice roll? Yeah. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> By the way, I love that you have a, a, a fucking lava lamp. <laughs> my mom got it for me for my birthday. That's so I cool. I, them. Yeah, I haven't figured out where to play. Like, no outlet. It's all right. So I'm rolling three d six for each. Oh, and then I have these goblin racial traits. Con plus one. <laughs> lol. Yeah, it is. It is trash frame rate, but we're gonna do our best here. I'm gonna just... I rolled a natural one, so that should be for um, my constitution, I think. That's two. A natural one! Oh, shit! Wait, but you have to roll three? God, that's so overpowered. Five. <laughs> and four, so ten plus one. This is gonna be a lot of dice. You sure you guys wanna do this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm not gonna hold the camera because it's gonna take forever. So that's a 10, and then a 3 plus 1 plus 3. Look, I only have one fancy <laughs> to stick, so. so that's uh, 7 for something. 4 plus 4 plus 1, 9. Wow, these are gonna be great low stats. <laughs> I already forgot what the first one was. 7, you think? Ten. 7. Okay, ten, seven, nine. How many? Oh, there's six of them. So, two, two. <laughs> Fuck! I just threw it on the ground. Well, I lost that one, so that's gone. I think I only have three stats. You only have three. You can't only have three. <laughs> I can pull up a um, a dice generator. Sure. <laughs> You roll four die and you take the best three. That's so broken. All right, I'll just, I can just redo them all with the dice generator. I don't know about this Christmas music. It's very techno-y. Why is it so damn techno-y? Ten 
Techno fucking sucks. <laughs> okay, I just rolled six of them, and then you take the, the highest ones, I think you said, so six, seventy nine. Okay, so I rolled a 12. Uh, no, that's too confusing. I'm just going to do the three dice so I can actually see the results. Yeah, Lithros is saying straight 3d6 is the OG way. Okay, good. Purity is the way. Okay, so I rolled, I got, um, I have an eight constitution plus one because of goblin stats. Uh, mm. What else is there? Dexterity, charisma, strength. Oh, strength has to be the next lowest. Um, Nine strength and wisdom. That's a. Uh, whoop, where'd it go? 12 wisdom. And then it's got to be like 13 charisma, 13 dexterity, 14. No. Yeah, 14 intelligence. Yeah. Nice low stats all around. I mean, for, for human beings have low stats. Like, I think protagonists are always overpowered just because that's just how it's ended up being. Who are you calling a human being, sir? <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, 14's not that bad. I think 14's not that bad. Actually, with the dex bonus for goblins, I think I might have a 15 dexterity, right? So that's that's pretty good. <laughs> oh shit, human beings have really good stats. What are you comparing them to? Oh, fuck. Goblins. All right, so how are we doing on the stats? Oh, that was all of them, right? Oh, wait, but type it in. I just got to see them all at once. Oh, okay, yeah, let me... I, just, uh, I have to see the character sheet, you know what I mean? Right, let me write it down one sec. I got to assess what we're dealing with. I do like the snow. It's kind of beautiful. beautiful. Humans have an int stamp, which most other species pr basically don't have. Oh, I also have to ask you the coffee question. Oh, what's the coffee question? So, I'll tell you the story of the coffee question. The story of the coffee question is I asked Thinkwort how he takes his coffee on a whim, and learned that Think Thinkwort has four to six shots of espresso in one cup. <sighs> And... What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that what was is... just awesome. What and is so... it like before coffee? <laughs> Who knows? He's so fucking chill. Yeah. Um, but then I had the thought, I should ask all my guests what their favorite coffee is, or how they take their coffee, but I figured most people are going to have sort of normal answers, so it might not be end up being that crazy of a thing. But nevertheless, I ask you, do you drink coffee? Uh, yes. How do you yeah. take the coffee? I go through phases where I do and don't. Uh, however I can get it normally. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, the most appalling way that I've taken it recently was, um, instant coffee Ooh. in a glass, um, with a spoonful of this Salab stuff that I got at the Russian and Armenian market down the street. Spoon so it has, like, a slightly rose sugary taste. Okay. I never heard of that. It's really fucking good. There's like a person ice cream place, and I guess not in my current area, like not terribly far away that has like all of their ice cream flavors have it in it, and it's the best. Wait, what is this substance called? Salab. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's S A H L A B. And I think, um, mm. I think it's some type of, I forgot it was wearing fucking makeup. It's, I think it's some type of a pudding or something. Mm. I'm Googling this for later. All right, that's a that's an interesting answer. How do you take your coffee? Black. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Is it for the aesthetic, or do you actually like it the most that way? I you it's like a little bit for health originally, just like might as well not have sugar or whatever. But at this point, I think I prefer it that way. Um, that makes sense. I like. Uh, I had. I was in Israel briefly, and I had. Um, you know, they call it like Bedouin coffee, and it's just like really dense, you know, with the stuff in it. Turkish coffee. Wait, like, like wait, what's in it? It's just like sure. grounds. It's, it's like, oh, that's cool. Heavy, heavy grounds at the bottom. 
Turkish coffee is awesome. I also like my sec second answer is just black coffee with sugar um, and no cream. That's a little sus. It is. It is a little. Uh, I mean, I like to think avant garde. Have you tried um, black coffee with root beer in it? No, with the that's... coffee pot. <laughs> what the fuck? In a coffee pot? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you pour the, you make the coffee and then put it in the pot and then. I think I got it because I was like house sitting for somebody, didn't know how to use their coffee maker, so I went to In and Out and um, they and they have coffee there and they have root beer there. And at the time, I wanted sugary coffee, so I was just like, well. And I just poured the coffee into the root beer cup. Okay, but then how did it taste? Awful. It was awful. Okay. Yeah. So, my opinion about mixing up food is that everyone will judge you for mixing up food, but it's because they are small minded fools. This is true. Cool. Glad we agree. Because everyone's like, oh, like, Chocolate and peanut butter, okay, that works, but that's like a special case or something. But then you'll say something like, I don't know, like jelly and tofu or something like that. And they'll be like, ew, that, no, and you just did it. You're like, ew, that sounds gross. Yeah, However, I mean, I definitely... I know they don't go together, but that's a social check, okay? The taste check, if you really think about the taste, tofu is light, right? Jelly is sweet. What do you think of that? No, you can definitely make, like tofu based desserts but when i think of just tofu like the platonic tofu i think of like tofu fried in oil which then does not sound like like hot tofu fried in oil with right. cold jelly sounds gross to me but there are lots of tofu based desserts that are really good okay but now my mouth is watering because i want the thing you just described which was fried tofu i wasn't even thinking fried tofu but fried oh, well. tofu with i guess jelly? if you fried it really well like i was thinking like when I'm not doing a good job cooking and it's just sort of covered in olive oil and that's it. Uh-huh. You said just covered but in yeah. olive oil. Yeah, and like in the pan, but not real, like not like crispy or good. But like, I bet if you crisp the tofu. Right, so then now know. we're almost, now we've basically invented a dessert. A crisp, yeah. just, I, my mouth is watering <laughs> right now. Like, With blueberry jelly. Yeah, it's like a blintz, it's like blintzies. Have you had blintzies before? A blintz? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I've had those before. Those are good. It's basically the same thing we just described. A blintz with jelly. So would you like... Oh, no, a we... full block of tofu straight from the box, right? Fry the whole thing at once, and then use one of those like syringes to inject it with jelly. Well, the syringe makes it seem uh, like you're doing evil science, but yeah. <laughs> no, I think they have uh, like pastry syringes. Isn't that how they get... Like creams into shit. Oh, I never I thought know. about that. That does, but that would make sense. My mouth is watering right now. I'm just getting hungry. Like, <laughs> do you have any tofu and uh, jelly in your fridge right now? <sighs> I doubt it. I doubt it. I have some pulled pork. Oh, I'm just getting hungry. I'm thinking about food. Fuck. So, do you not get the visceral reaction to gross food combinations? Because I, I do, but I have a philosophical bias towards, you know, like. You do you just probably don't tell me about it, but I endorse trying it. Right, right. What I think is that people, you asked me one thing and I started answering a different thing. What did you ask me? <laughs> uh, do you get the like revulsion feeling about um, mixing weird foods? I, or... Right, right, right. I basically don't. That's powerful. I think I basically don't. I'm not sure. Um pickles if i was gonna mix pickles and tofu i think i could make that work i don't know we, we need some suggestions that seems fine, yeah. it's usually like dessert things with savory things it's fucked up yeah but think of how many dessert things with savory things are so delicious imagine like a like a kind of salty donut yeah that's true and i've actually had really good banana and curry flavored ice cream before that's wild i never heard of it but i could see it I think I've also had mushroom ice cream, which was not as good because it had pieces of mushroom in it. That's weird. Yeah. I have a little bit of a reaction to that. <laughs> <laughs> Pickles and peanut butter. Yeah, it's odd. But the thing is, okay, all I'm trying to say, all my point is, is that I think people do the social check of 
do these go together in my culture? And then they do the... what? Then they imagine what it would taste like. Yeah. And they object to a cultural taboo. So, like, maybe you already know about this, but Italians have lots of really strict root rules about their food. And one of the big ones is you're not allowed to have dairy with fish or seafood, I think, of any kind. Mm. So, like, if you have a tuna and marinara sauce on your pasta, you cannot put Parmesan cheese on it. If you do, like, if somebody at a restaurant tries to do that to you, it is not an Italian restaurant and you should yell at them and leave. <laughs> wait, what, wait, 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 what about shrimp Alfredo? Oh, that sounds fake and horrifying. <laughs> you never had, no, like, linguine. Is that a thing? That sounds, I don't think that's allowed. I'm pretty sure. I can go check with, with a, you know, my mom is Italian, so she she can lay down the law, but like that yeah. sounds really not real. I mean, That sounds I, like an American thing. It could be. No, it could be. So I, I am half Italian, by the way. Yeah, same. So so we, we could talk about that. Wait, what's the other half? Uh, Jewish, Eastern okay. European. Yeah, same. Oh my <laughs> I God. I three, three fourths Italian, one fourth Jewish, but yeah. Are we like, like related? Polish, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking probably. Yeah. Now, Sweet. unless you're, is the part of Italian from Sardinia? Because if it is, then we probably are related because there are like five people who live there. Okay. So in my brain, Sardinia is like a kingdom. Um, this plane is crashing. Let me unfuck that. Sardinia. No, I don't think they're specifically from Sardinia. Oh, no. Oh, so you're, this is Sardinia. What is being Sicilian and is that related to this being from Sardinia? No, those are two different things. And probably if you said that to like they'd Sardinian people, they'd be really mad. Yeah, because so so uh, uh, Italians are super, super racist, especially about other Italians. And like the farther south you are, the more you're the butt of the racism. Right. Um, right. So like Sicilians are like the absolute like like F tier Italians, <laughs> according to Italians. Right. Um, and Sardinia is kind of it's like a, it's a different island. It is an island, but it's so the, is kicking Sicily away. That's how you can find it on a map. Uh -huh. um, Sardinia is the other big island, and that's where like Europeans will go for vacations because it has like beautiful beaches and stuff. And otherwise, it's mostly I think like sheep right. um, and little medieval castles and things. Oh, and see. there are like I think in the village that my relatives are from, there were like two last names there or something. It's really bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot. Of, yeah. Oh, let me. I tried looking up Sardinian memes once, <laughs> and. The only ones I could find were basically jokes about fucking goats. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, okay, Sardinia, and then yeah, this is the the picture. Have you seen this movie? Oh, wait. So you're saying so that's Sardinia, and then is, is Sicily the big triangle below? Yeah, getting kicked away. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and the Sardinian flag is arguably really horrifically mm -hmm. racist. Oh wow! It's a bunch of severed Moors heads. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. But it's pretty badass. I think that it's really beautifully drawn. It is cool. It is well inked, you know. Oops. Yeah. Was that a racist thing to say? I don't know. I don't know. You might get in terms of service violence. <laughs> the coat of arms is the same thing. You know what this reminds me of? That oh. is that is kind of intense. This reminds me of um, In Hoc Signo Vinces Cortez. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? The in chat, the, what does that say? First result on DuckDuckGo for Sardinian memes. Dare I? I don't look like a goblin. Oh my god, holy shit. I think you dare. This is... <laughs> oh no, we're having a connection issue. Hold on, I will rescue. Calvin being meme, I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, auto for all. All right, we, we got you back. We dropped you for a second. What are we looking at? Oh. Apparently a Sardinian name. I have no idea. Well, the thing it reminds me of is... I gotta find this. In hoc signo vinces. So, Cortez going to the New World. Um, I, what I need is Cortez's coat, coat of arms. Ooh. Uh, Very sinister imagery. Yeah, it had this in hoc signo vinces. In the sign you will conquer. In the sign of the cross you will conquer. Uh, here it is. And yeah, it also has, as you can see... Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. The, the natives in chains. Um, so that's 
I guess. Wow, it's interesting that the natives all look Spanish, though. Yeah, I think there's sort of a little bit of a lack of imagination. They do look somewhat indigenous, I guess. I don't know, the hair. They're like hella white looking, like fair skinned, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cortez actually, I believe, married a local woman. Who, That's awkward. Yeah, she, I think she like bore his children and then she kind of acted as an interpreter. I think they named her Maria, you know. Because they're Spanish. That's not right, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, wait, but that's why you're Gabagool. Oh, yeah, because I was trying to... <laughs> uh, my family's from, like, or my mom is from, like, actually from Italy and uh, from mm. northern, farther north than Sicily, so she's, like, very racist against Sicilians, which means very racist against Italian-Americans for the most part. Mm. Um, so I was trying to embrace the Italian American heritage by by yeah, also because Servaca mentioned it and it cracked me up. Yeah. <laughs> but I've never had Gabagool or Capicolo or whatever the fuck. Capocolo, I think is what it's called in Italian. Yeah. The other day, yeah, you mentioned Gabagool and I started thinking about it, and that's when I ordered that pizza and I had a Gabagool and, and pineapple pizza. Jesus fuck. <laughs> That sounds like that would taste good. Oh, the reason I brought up the Italian thing, though, was because... So they have the fish and, uh, like, dairy rule, which intuitively sounds correct to me, but then I realized, like, wait, like, bagels with lox and cream cheese is fucking amazing. So, mm. like, what's up with that? How do mm -hmm. they account for that? Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, hold on, sorry. I'm going to increase your volume a little bit from my end. Say something, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cook the fish. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. Blah, blah. All right. This will work. I think this will just do. I'll just make it super loud. Um, I had never heard this rule, but, but shrimp linguine with Alfredo sauce seems real to me. That does not sound real. That sounds like a lie. I'm going to actually wait, unless it's legit Alfredo sauce, which I'm pretty sure doesn't have dairy in it. Although I don't go. Oh, well, butter. I forget. I'm not good with Alfredo. Yeah, does butter count as dairy? I don't think so. I think it's mostly a cheese thing. Yeah. I, I do have a Italian-American story for you. Oh, yes, you tell. So what happened is um, I ordered food, and the wrong food arrived. Um, Olive Garden arrived. And so I'm... What? So, and I was dieting hardcore at the time, and... I got someone's pasta from fucking Olive Garden. And I'm sitting there just like, fuck it, I am guess I'm going to eat this. And I like, I'm like unwrapping my Olive Garden. And my dad c comes in looking deadly serious. And he says, Michael, Italians don't eat Olive Garden. <laughs> so, <laughs> he just laid it on me like this. I'm like, dad, dad, dad. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know. I can't account for it at all, but my mom actually used to take us to Olive Garden sometimes, and I don't know how she justified it in her head. Yeah. But I... she also said the only good Italian food she's had in the States is Trader Joe's frozen pastas. Wild. It could be that because my dad was not born in Italy, that for him it's like uh, sort of conserving some Italian identity, but if you really grew up there, then maybe you just don't give a shit. Yeah, or maybe it's almost like a, what is it, the closer proximity, the more you hate it type of thing. So maybe for a moment, like, oh, this is obviously American food. You know, you don't even understand the idea of being Italian. And for your dad, it's like, well, it's almost Italian. But right. Their yeah, breadsticks, though, are so fucking good. Right. I think Vecnin is kind of Italiano, I have heard. Hey! <laughs> The grandma we didn't like used to take us to Olive Garden a lot. <laughs> okay. Correlation? Mm-hmm. Dude, I really am getting hungry, though. That's that's on me. You should eat something, bro. I have these shakes. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for this? Um, the yeah. shakes. I want to... I want to get... Blacked out over here. I want to get, um... Fucking sponsored by these guys because I love these shakes. Chocolate, premier protein shake. All right. Solid option. You don't like chocolate? You get some vanilla. The vanilla is fine. It's kind of basic, but it gets the job done. 
feeling a little bit more experimental, why not try peaches and cream? We love peaches and what cream. The fuck? That sounds great. And the peaches and cream is also not for everybody, but for those with more, more rarefied tastes, you could even go so far as to try a banana, which is uh, light and creamy. In addition to this... Mix it with the chocolate. You could mix it with the chocolate, which I have not actually done. In addition to this, my very favorite one I don't even have on me because I drank all of them, which is the chocolate and peanut butter. Um, and that is uh, my favorite shit from Premier Protein, who does not actually sponsor me, but fucking should, because I love their shit. That is all. And they're made with, like, they have actual sugar in them, and that, like, shitty aftertaste bullshit? There are four gram in an entire 11 and a half fluid ounce shake, there are four grams of carbs, one gram of sugar. Mm. That is low. That is low. What are they putting it instead? Does it taste like ass? No, it tastes so good. Right, I'm going to look into it. As far as shakes go, it tastes good. I just need, like, an honest shake that's like, yeah, shit ton of protein, but also, like, 36 grams of sugar, and I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to reduce my quality a little bit just to get some... Can I... 20 FPS? Is that going to be horrible? Let's try it. It'll be, like, film quality. Yeah. Hoping it'll help with the internet. Soren's right, actually. I just put I screwed a cop. Fuck it. Yeah. Cheese is totally... in the chat. What's up, cheese? By the way, Goblin, if you want to take a caller, and if anybody's down, we can we can get callers in. Oh yeah, that sounds fun. Wait, I should ask you some some stuff though. Um, how long have you been on Twitter? Oh shit, I think uh, I think since twenty sixteen, like shortly after the election. Mm hmm. So wait, can that be right? That was a long time ago. Yeah, I guess so. So basically, twenty seventeen. Yeah, you're right. It must be twenty seventeen then. Or so. Or so. Um, <laughs> That's how elections work. We'll know you've made it when the premier protein logo shows and up in the overlay. Yeah, it'll be like type exclamation point premier for facts about premier protein. They'll make you a skin for your plane. Oh yeah, that would be sick. That's a great idea. Hold on. I want to change the weather to something more exciting. Um, and I'm going to turn back on the... Vo uh, or we could stick with with the spooky... Let's see what else we got. We can do um, Storm. Storm's intense. Hell yeah. We're going to do the storm. Let's try it. Good weather. Let's try it. Yeah, this is Iceland. This is going to be like uh, lightning and shit? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I wonder if the ice will melt on my... <laughs> they do call it Niceland over there. They have like stickers and shit for, I guess, tourists visiting. Uh-huh. Niceland. Um, and then... Do you, like, who... Did someone get you into Twitter or did you just join randomly? Uh, so my friend got me into Twitter. I don't know what, it's not really doxing her because her real name is on the account, but I don't know if she's, she might not want to be associated with me on Twitter. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, my friend got me to Twitter because she was like obsessed with it during the election. She was like buying promoted tweets to try to get um, like Christian conservatives to not vote for Trump. Oh, wow. <laughs> And um, she was just like, Twitter's so great. It's yeah. so cool. You should totally join. I was like, fucking whatever. Like, I had an account years ago, and I hated it. And so I came back. I didn't know how to use it properly. But um, yeah, I wanted to find the rationalists. So I found um, Grognor has that list of, like, um, he has a weird Sun Twitter list. But there's a different one that was, like, rationalists and post-rationalists on Twitter. So I followed everybody on the list. Uh-huh. The uh, I knew Grognor from Less Wrong. Yeah, I um, I actually didn't spend that much time on the website, so I knew him because he used to come to our local meetups when oh. he lived in L.A. Cool, okay. Um, I actually ran, I don't even know if I want to say the place, I, I ran a less wrong meetup back in the day in a city. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Early on, I went to the um, 
2011 uh, Singularity Institute Rationality Mini Camp. No, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I didn't realize you were like hardcore. Yeah, I, I have a storied history. Like, we flew out of this crazy cloud thing. That's amazing. How did you end up getting into Less Wrong in the first place? You're at Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality guy? Or, uh... Before that, before that shit. I, I just, someone, honestly, I, so I've always been a, a bit of a weeb in my own way, not as, you know, wise about the, the animu as some of our friends in the chat here. Um, it's true, Prester, I do not give off rationalist vibes because through strength of will, I became a socially flexible extrovert. That's not true. I was always kind of... Did like, you used to wear glasses? No, no. <laughs> I did used to be... Okay, I will say, okay, I hardcore believe in self-improvement. Um, I hardcore believe that people can change themselves. And I think if people met me from, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was a lot blockier, stiff, like socially unresponsive sort of person. Um, so I do think I changed. That makes sense. So, so distance from less wrong started improving your social skills? <laughs> or, uh... well, so less wrong definitely made me smarter. That is, that is one of the things I believe. Awesome. It was basically like meeting people who are like talking about smart people shit in a smart people way. And like, I think I like assembled like a protocol in my brain for like interacting with them. And it, it just made me smarter. And then people have a lot of beef with the rationalists and I, and I get it and I have some beef, but I don't really have beef at this point. I just think that there's a lot of good there and nobody's perfect. I don't know. I like making fun of rationalists, but... Like, I have no beef, beef with them, and if anybody has beef with them, I will fight you. We will fist fight, and that's how we will determine who is correct. There you go. You heard it here first. Goblin will physically beat you up if you criticize the rationalists. Oh, I need to turn on the chill music. This will be better. Or if you say that post-rationalism post is dead, I will also fight you. Uh-huh. What are people talking about? Half my time reaction to the rational stuff is this is silly. Half the time it's finally someone else thinks the way I do. Yeah, for me, finding the rationality people was just sort of like, oh, finally. Yeah. <laughs> like, there are other people that are fucked up in ways that I am. Yeah. So it was mostly a social thing for me, but I did read some of the sequences and like, yeah, I love Scout's blog and all that. Yeah. Um, and HP more, of course. I did read all of HPMR and really liked it. Um, the uh, I was a major Eliezer fanboy for for years. Um, yeah, no, I was I was into it. The uh, I definitely hardcore thought about like AI is going to eat the world, and we got to do immortality tech, and we got to do cryonics, you know. Oh yeah, I'm still pretty into the the whole immortality tech and cryonics thing. Um, yeah. At least on a theoretical. Like I don't like. Uh, I say into it. I mean, I support it like mentally. I don't have any money, so I can't, you know, get cryonics or anything. But like, right. I'm glad that people are working on that shit. Right, right, right. So Soren, if you don't know, do you know about Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality? This is Eliezer's fanfic from the Harry Potter world. Ari doesn't like Yudkowsky because. I'm going to go gives, over there and punch you, Ari. <laughs> gives Neil deGrasse Tyson vibes. He's like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's like twice as smart and three times as much of an asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Yeah. I don't think I've seen him be an asshole when it didn't seem pretty warranted, though. But maybe that's my biases speaking. Well, th this is one of those things. Yeah, this is one of your cognitive biases. No, sorry. Um, This is the... Uh, no, the it's one of those things where I think the people have a have beef with Eliezer's kind of like tone and his like level of respect for like normalcy and stuff. I think a lot of that is what people read as him being an asshole. I don't know if that makes. I sense. feel like it's also just the thing that automatically happens once people get a certain amount of attention, where it's yeah. like you know they don't like the vibe for some reason and they just have to find excuses to complain about them or tear them down or whatever and it's just like go find something you like go do something else right. you can walk away from the computer right 
do you want to opine on uh, Ayla <laughs> and how? I fucking love. I love her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can do no wrong in my mind. No, I mean, like sometimes I get why people are mad, but it's it's like ninety nine percent of the time they're mad because they assume that she's like trying to say something that I don't think she is. I think mm -hmm. it's more of an autistic, like genuinely asking a question that she knows is going to upset people, but not necessarily asking to edgelord. Um, right. I do get the strong sense that she doesn't have those same like disgust responses to a right. lot of things. Right. So, you know, you have to simulate it and it's just not the same. Right. Yeah, I think that's right. And I do wonder, I, I wonder if some, some part of her just really does kind of like, I mean, like the reaction. I don't know. I mean, yeah, she's not stupid, so she must know that, you know, there's going to be some backlash when she says shit. But, so, like, all her comments, though, like, the comments people leave are just the most, like, midwit. Yeah. Like, no, like, lower that, like, she has some of the worst commenters I've seen on the internet. Um, yeah. Which might be because of the cam girling, I'm not really sure, or maybe because people go seek out people they don't agree with, like. Right. So many prudish weirdos are, like, commenting on a cam girl account because they don't like nudity or something. She's mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. It is a weird activity. It's a weird way to spend your evening or whatever. Yeah. Aunties of all stripes are just cringe. Say more about that. I'm curious. Just, like, people who, you know, like, everybody's got their hobbies and interests and stuff and ways they choose to spend their time on the internet and whatever. And like yeah. aunties are, are the anti fans, the people who it's like, you know what I'm going to spend my time on? I'm going to find somebody I don't like Wait. and give them shit on the internet. Hold on. I got to play. Let me find a video. Hold on. It'll take me one second to dig this up. Um, this is my favorite. Uh... Oh, where, where the fuck is it? Um... And this plane, of course, is trying to crash itself while I'm trying to be productive and useful to the world. Get the fuck back in your lane, plane. You piece of shit. All right. There we go. Hold on, I'm, I'm just going to pause the plane and put up the Kanye video. Pause the, the music. And play the Kanye video by clicking on the thing that makes that appear here. There it is. All right, let, let me know when you can I mean, we like to collaborate hear this. We like to go and ask questions and see, you know, for this job, who would be great? Oh, right, I'm not know, listening to Twitch. Let me turn on my volume. More things yeah. get done that people can okay. see and live in and breathe in, the, the more and more jobs we'll get. Like right now, you'll know it when it happens. And, you know, I'm paying for a lot of the projects that I want to work on. You know, whether it's like my own home or like a store design or, uh, you know, the the pavilion idea with OMA. But, you know, Here it is. I believe just to will this into fruition that when I'm 40, uh, you know, we'll, you know, we'll have to like turn down projects. I've done basically everything that I can do uh, with. Maybe I missed time. The amount of finances I have. So if I go and think of a, a new form of uh, filmmaking and I go through the entire process, you know, I end up funding the entire, you know, thing myself because it's too abstract of a concept for anyone to, you know, put their finger on. The voice will eventually get out there. And I believe that, you know, so many people are just so fucking obvious. They don't even realize that when they box me in or try to verbally put me in some type of box or put Donda in a box that they're really showing their level of ignorance. They're putting themselves in a box and it, you know, people can write, write, write all they want, but what are people doing? And if there's anybody that's out there doing, they know how hard it is to actually do. And I'm like a motivation of the doers. If, if everything I did failed, which it doesn't, it actually succeeds. But if everything I did, uh, failed just the fact that i'm willing to fail is an inspiration people are so scared to lose that they don't even try like one thing that people can't say is they can't say i'm not trying and i'm not trying my hardest and i'm not trying to do it 
the best way that I know how with what little information I get. You know, I have so many companies that like dedicate a certain amount to the arts or this or that or creativity and this blah blah. blah. So many companies, but somehow it's like they see, okay, you're a celebrity, so you can't be this blah blah. And they have no history. I went to college on an art scholarship. I was like the number one. Uh, I promise the good part is coming, but we just got to get to it. And, you know, so it's music has been like a Trojan horse for me to really create art again. Like, what do you think I spend the most time on when I'm creating a tour? The visuals. That's what I spend the most time on. I am more of a visual artist and more of a product person. I am a producer. I am a production of me, you know. I thought, you know, it's not like I was the best rapper in the world or something, you know. It's, I sat around and thought about it and then became Kanye West. I like just doing these train of thoughts anyway, though. It's like, it's kind of fun because when this goes online or whatever it is, it really matters and it like really doesn't matter. What matters is, you know, the people who are sparked by it and the people who are like offended by it it doesn't fucking matter. Fuck you. You know, like, because it's about most. That's all. That's all. It's just how he says fuck you. <laughs> that was delightful, though. It's the whole thing. It doesn't fucking matter. Fuck it's, you. You know, the people who are sparked by it and the people who are, like, offended by it, it doesn't fucking matter. Fuck you. You know? So, anyway, I agree with Kanye West and you on that topic. Based. I don't think I've ever seen a Kanye interview before. That was, I don't know. He's like, not quite what I expected. The, uh, yeah, he, he's got an interesting energy. He's different in different ones. I've watched a shitload of his videos at this point. Hello, Ashley. Was this the video you let hype you up for my latest visual video? I am always constantly in a process of getting hyped up by Kanye West to make stuff. It is just such a productive thing for me to be obsessed with Kanye West. Are there other like figures like that for people? I, I feel like there are, I don't know, gurus, I guess muses maybe. Like I'm sure like Jordan Peterson is that guy for a lot of people, but. Right. Um, I don't know, how about for you? Is there anybody like that for you? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I tend to just more like whatever I happen to see somebody doing is what I decide that I want to do. So the yeah. way to trick myself into doing a thing is just to like watch somebody doing the thing I want to want to do. Yeah. What, like what kind of stuff? Oh, I mean, like, I think it applies to basically anything. Maybe not sports, but pretty much anything else. So, like, if I see somebody streaming, I'm like, I should start streaming. If I see somebody writing a book, I'm like, I better write a book. And, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Arcano mentions Kanye Z's for working out and Steve Jobs, Charlie Munger. Um, suddenly this fucking music got really loud. Um... Yeah, for me, uh, so did I show you my weird figurine the other day? Oh, the uh, Death, not Death Stranding, Kojima? Yeah, yeah, Kojima Productions. So, I, I'll show chat. So, I'm not a figurine-owning person, I just own one figurine, okay? And this is the uh, symbol of Kojima Productions, a little dusty, um, the studio that makes Kojima's latest games, and it has this little fucking dude and i have this because i am inspired by hideo kojima and i like his vibe i like his ethos i like the shit he makes i love metal Gear Solid games i love death stranding but to me it's a similar thing to the kanye stuff where it's he's a, he's an artistic uh maker you know what i mean he, he makes shit and he's figured out how to make it into a business and that's the best because being a struggling starving artist is cool but it sucks so fuck that. <laughs> so yeah, this is cool kinda, to be a rich one. Yeah, way better, way better. Um, it is cute. Thank you. Oh yeah. Oh, oh right. And you have the bridge baby. <laughs> oh yeah, my boyfriend does. But you know, I live here now, so yeah. Partial owner of a bridge baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, the oh, uh, you draw. Yeah, mostly for work at this point, but yeah. Oh, that's cool. What kind of, if it's not do too doxy in the wrong way, what kind of work gets you drawn? If I may ask. Um, I mostly do video production related stuff. So it's been like 
usually you know different types of animation. So I do editing and um, like After Effects animation and stuff like that. Um, but like the current project that I'm on, whoops, that I've been on since like November, is a uh, short film, an animated short film. Yeah. That I'm drawing all of the like uh, the characters for basically. So all of the character animation. <laughs> oh, that's like yeah. extremely cool. Um, and most of the companies I work for are uh, like libertarian think tanks or nonprofits and things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so this is fast. I actually now I want to grill you about this just for my personal interest, but yeah, sure. Um, either on or off, but God, these clouds are quite amazing. This is very ridiculous. I know. Um, I want to live there. Yeah. Have you played Death Stranding? Only a little bit. I'm kind of a massive pussy, and I have a hard time with games that ask you to do things in real time and have multiple mm. buttons. So, mm. Um, mm. but I'm working my way up to actually playing it because it seemed pretty sick. Well, it's, it, I think uh, I think some of those locations are Icelandic in some way. Oh yeah, it totally looks like Iceland. Right. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'll just flag it, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit now. Um, I'm interested in, like, understanding how that part of the world works. It's sort of like creative, people doing creative shit for money. And um, I just started fucking around with After Effects just to make my videos better. You know, got a cool... I don't know. I, I just feel like I get so much uh, out of, like, even the most basic shit. I get so excited when it makes my videos, like, cooler. Um, like an equalizer for my voice. You know what I mean? Um but I don't even know what I'm trying to ask you. I don't know. It's just a, it, it's a part of the world I don't understand. I want to understand and might want to get like involved in more. Like how would you get a gig doing After Effects or something for somebody? <sighs> something like that. Or like what are companies paying for is part of it. Um, are, are companies handing out subtasks or like ho whole like all in one make me a promotional video shit like that. Um, I don't know what the norm is, but because uh, I've been freelance basically my entire career. So um, the way it's been for me has just kind of been like, um, I've mostly, like, I didn't really go to school for this. I, so I kind of tell myself whatever programs because it was applicable, applicable to whatever I was doing at the time. And then mm -hmm. most of the stuff I learned on the job and just happened to, I did a lot of like networking in specifically in uh, libertarian film circles because I mm -hmm. went to like, I did film studies for school and was like hoping to become a film editor or something, I think, at the time. Yeah. Um, but essentially that networking led to just people who, I don't know, there's a lot of like small companies and, and um, nonprofits and stuff like that, that are, you know, it's just like three people work there and they're constantly making content and they just hire anybody who happens to have those skills that they know. So you like befriend somebody and then they're like, hey, you want to work on this? And then they test you out and, right. you know, whatever. So yeah, pretty much everybody work for knows each other. That's fascinating. The, uh, oh, wait, so we can vibe about this. You know the fable of the dragon tyrant? No. The, okay, the fable of the dragon tyrant is a short story by um, early transhumanist philosopher whose name is slipping my mind. Bostrom. Oh, okay. And it's this fable where TLDR, death is bad. That's the kind of vibe. Um, that's the... Yeah, that's like the that's like the lesson of the fable. Um, back in 2011 or whatever the fuck, I tried to almost hire this guy. You, you've probably heard his name, uh, Thomas or Tomas K. Um, he's on Twitter. He's a libertarian dude. Oh, is that Mormon music? No. Mm, he made a video called "George Ought to Help." I'm not sure if I know that. Oh, this is okay. So I might just know one weird fact, one weird disoriented fact. I assume this dude was like well known. It's this video. Uh, it's like a cartoon, and it's about voluntarism. It's about um, they've got this blue little blue character, and it's like people trying to get him to help, and then they end up compelling him to help using things like taxation, and it's wrong, um, and that's the idea of the video. But yeah, that's up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I, so I ended up, we should also, we got to talk about libertarianism in a second, but I ended up hitting him up to get a quote to see if he could make a, an animated version of the fable of the dragon tyrant. And I got a quote. It wasn't that much money at the time. And he probably charges more now, but I ended up not following through because of 
bad reasons, basically. Years later, someone made... I, I also emailed Nick Bostrom, and he said, yeah, if you can get it done in a high-quality way, you should do it. So it was like... Oh, cool. I really should have done it. I don't know. Just networking and libertarian video making people if you like teaching yourself stuff you can you can just do the whole thing tap to bottom probably just using after effects uh-huh that would be the easy way though that seems maybe yeah you can do you can make shapes in after effects yeah Fuck it. Mm. yeah you could have like a square talking to a triangle i don't know yeah hello vogel fry welcome okay so i i also used to be a hardcore randian odds oh, same. <laughs> so I think I knew this about you. Um, yeah, probably at some point. I will always defend Ayn Rand. Oh, okay. All right. I think I, I, I from a riddle doodle might have mentioned something. Um, the uh, yeah, I, I am no longer. I am no longer one of those people. But I do think Rand is totally fascinating. Yeah, I don't even know whether I'm one of those people now. I just haven't read her stuff since college. But yeah. in college, it was, like, extremely... It, I think it, like, hit the same good vibes, whatever feelings that um, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality did. Yeah. So I think once I got into that, I was like, this is even better. Fuck it. Right. But, um, right. Yeah. I think Ayn Rand is great. And her haters are boring and lame. <laughs> Yeah, the um, there's so many funny, there's some crazy Ayn Rand stories um, that people don't know, but then they hear and it just sounds so crazy. Like, do you know that when she was buried, her supporters got her a dollar sign shaped wreath? Holy shit, did they? <laughs> yes. Yes. For a while, I wanted a dollar sign tattoo. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty intense. Oh, Sir Vogel Frey says competency porn. I think that would be the, the thing that Ayn Rand and uh, H.K. Moore have in common. But I think it's its not just that. It's like, I, honestly, I think it's like that level of like autism that's in both of those things. That was very mm. appealing to me. Yeah. Mm. The like extreme, you know, like being logical and that being a virtue. Right. Right. What's up, uh, Animalic? Welcome, my dude. Hey! <laughs> All right, so so we're both uh, semi ex objectivist, uh, transhumanist leaning, um, sort of like rationalist or rationalist adjacent, partial Italians with interests in uh, artistic endeavors and so on. We're basically the same person. We're basically the same person. Like I can't even name a difference between us. I can't even think of one. Literally, no. We play D and D. True. Or D and D like RPG. Oh my god! Yeah, one of these days I'll, I'll be the host, and and Kersey will be gone, and yeah. you won't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. They they won't no even notice. notice. <laughs> they won't even notice it's different. That's true. I'm working on getting girl lights. Yeah, you gotta get the gotta get the girl lights. Don't talk about my mustache that way, Prester. <laughs> Color cast here is crazy. Which one of you is the gob and which is the ghoul? I'll let odds choose. Odds of you. I'm, yeah, I'm the gob. What? You're the gob. I'll be the ghoul. Munger has that too. He's like, yo, just run through like 80 ways of looking at a problem in order to properly assess it and then go for it easy. And his application was investing with Warren Buffett, which went kind of well. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> I remember, um, yeah, in college when I was kind of hardcore about the libertarian thing, I remember, like, learning weird facts, like that the lo local owner of a chess club was kind of like a mysterious rich guy who, like, was a Randian. You just get the sense of, like, older people who, like, were Randians, and they would have this austere vibe of, like, oh, they exist, like, a rich adults who believe in, in the, the shit. wild. Yeah. Um, it feels like there's like two or three types of Randians and it's just, yeah, it's like old rich people and um, like shithead Wall Street type of children. Mm. And then the, the ones that I think are like the true Randians, which are like the um, 
like cripplingly shy, <laughs> awkward nerds that uh-huh. mostly don't speak. And oh, also there's a contingency of um, like formerly religious, especially Catholic people, and gay people who lived with like uh, families that weren't supportive. Oh, interesting. I didn't actually know about the the. I did meet one Catholic uh, Randian girl who had a whole shtick about how these were like definitely compatible ideologies, which I don't That's think weird. is true. But no, but, <laughs> I think it's normally ex-Catholics who like former Catholics become Randians because yeah, like I feel like objectivism is the opposite of Catholicism. It's like fuck your guilt. It's based in nothing. Just you don't have to live for everybody else around you. Yeah, it's interesting, but but also, God, there's so much about objectivism. Objectivism is also just such a very American ideology, um, and American individualism is very Protestant. Yeah, that makes sense. I think um, it's hard. It's really hard to know how to place these things. Uh, did you ever read any of uh, Nathaniel Brandon? I think I read like one or two essays that were in the Virtue of Selfishness compilation. Right, right. Oh yeah, that's part of that's part of my uh, objectivist cred. Is that the thing that got me into Rand was actually reading the Virtue of Selfishness. It was not reading Atlas Shrugged. Damn. That's yeah, all. I got into it because somebody was like, "There's an essay contest." And I was like, "I'll read a book to win money. Fuck it." Oh. And then I was like, "This is the best thing I've ever read." <laughs> they do a lot of scholarships. They they do a shitload of essay contests. Yeah. I want to know how big is the pile of money that, like, Objectivist International is, like, sitting up, you know? There's, like, a shit ton of really rich Objectivists, so it's probably a lot. That's I went to, I, I think I've been to a couple of rich Objectivist houses before, and I've just been like, oh, yeah. you're like those rich people that, that nobody knows about. Uh-huh. Like, you forget that they're rich people who are not famous. They're just, like, living in these astonishing houses. Totally. Um, in Mad Men... I believe the old guy who like started the firm or, or something. I think there's an allusion to Atlas Shrugged in there. Yeah, definitely. I, that's one of the few things I remember about Mad Men. Uh huh. And I'm happy because they made him like a, an interesting and entertaining character, and not just like a stick in the mud, angry rich dude. The way right. I feel like always people think objectivists are. <laughs> right, Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, I feel like they're usually not. They're usually weird or fucked up in some way. Hmm. That doesn't hurt other people. <laughs> What else about Rand? There, there's a book apparently in about like libertarianism that's called. It usually starts with Ayn Rand, which I thought was. Oh, funny. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I never, I never read it. I just like the title. Randians are the rich people who eat fried chicken with utensils. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've read much of the libertarian canon. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't really read nonfiction pretty much at all. So if you mm. want me to become ideological, you have to put it in fiction format. Yeah. Make it fucking entertaining. Oh, God, this is weird. I can see my body. Ah! <laughs> you ever just look down and see your whole body? <laughs> just your empty inside. <laughs> you're empty. You ever just think you're... You ever just feel empty? <laughs> this is so weird. Is I like this... it when you accidentally clip through characters and you can see like their eyeballs and their teeth and their tongue, but like no other part of their face. Oh look, we got the glasses. Hey, what's up, Embryosophy? Welcome. This is what it's like to be a disembodied person. You just float. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too entertained by this. That's embodiment, baby. All right, I get out of this horrible. Can you like clip through the ground or through the floor of the uh, plane? Uh, I can try. I don't know if I'd advise it. I'm just curious. Yeah, look at these shoes. I don't know why I'm looking at these shoes. Anyway, oh god, the plane. Those are like dad shoes. Dad shoes. Have you uh, drawn your whole life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's dope. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, the first, I mean, you know, it's like little kids usually draw, but I think I got pretty into trying to copy things pretty young, so I was, like, really into Archie Comics and Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon, so I would just draw that shit all the time. Oh, sick. That's nice. Yeah. 
I remember having a lot of trouble drawing things from my imagination, but then did get good at copying them. And I can still kind of do it if I t really take my time. But I have always Apparently, found it hard. Apparently, artists discourage trying to draw from your imagination. So I always <laughs> felt like, you know, oh, you have to do it from imagination, otherwise it doesn't count. But fuck that. <laughs> Use references. Oh, do, do people say don't tr try to draw from imagination? Yeah. Like, uh, I think, like, professional artists tend to be like, yeah, no, you, use references. It's going to make your art better. Also, in general, I don't know, I feel like people are IP cucked, so they're all worried about, like, oh, you can't use copyrighted images. You can't mm. copy whatever. You can't copy other people's shit. Like, fuck, if you combine it and make something new, mm. it's good. You should do whatever you can to make art that, and that makes making art easier. Cheating and shortcuts are good. Okay, this is useful for me to hear. I didn't know that Don't Draw From Memory was a meme, and I definitely have been hanging on to some it doesn't count unless you draw it from your brain. Yeah, also the only way to get good at drawing it from your brain is by doing it, like, from a reference pretty much a lot. Yeah, okay. I'm realizing that I was modeling the skill wrong. I think I was modeling the skill like you would somehow just, like... I, like, I feel like I can get better at drawing what's in front of me. I feel like I understand the loop that would cause that. But I, I think I've been thinking that, like, it would somehow just leap to, like, now you can do it from your brain, when really uh, you probably have to grind um, um, that I, external I'm thing for a long time. I'm assuming this is how it works for other people, but for me it seems to work almost as, like, you do it from reference, and you, it's like you figure out whatever the form is you're trying to draw, and then you break it down and figure out your personal formula, I guess, for getting it together. And once you practice it a bit, there's some muscle memory there. Mm. And also just some mental notes on like, this is how I, I personally do this thing or whatever. Mm. Um, and then when it comes to doing it from memory, you end up following your usual formula. And then the way to get better is to revisit those old formulas and rework them from scratch. Mm. So a formula is like, here's how I draw a face or something. Yeah, exactly. All right, I could probably get good at drawing. Oh, definitely. I think anybody can if they practice a lot. I mean... This is one of those things that people don't believe. Like, singing is another one that I, I got pilled on, where I was shit at singing, and someone just ranted persuasively enough at me that anyone can get good at singing, and then I tried harder and realized that I was basically, like, holding my breath and trying to not sing while I sang, and then I stopped doing that, and it started, like, sounding pretty good. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I don't know why singing seems harder to me like it even though i know there's you know like your diaphragm is involved but somehow that feels more abstract even though that makes no fucking sense because art seems like that would be a more abstract thing maybe but it's i don't know i think it's like we convince ourselves it's physiological because it is so related to body stuff um or that it's like whichever thing you have a harder time with maybe right I mean, part of it is uh, that blew my mind with singing is that there's a thing w which it's basically just getting air through your body and like relaxing your muscles, you know? Um, yeah, that makes sense. If I ever come on the show, I will sing a Gilbert and Sullivan Patter song. You could come on right now, Prester. <laughs> Fuck yeah, serenade us. Yeah, well... <laughs> Preferably the nightmare song. Is there a butt? I should enjoy that very much, but. Get in, Presser. Oh, he is in lobby. Hey, Presser. Tell ya. Sorry, I had to push the talk on. Sorry. Okay, let me push the talk off. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? Hello. Do you have a song for us? Yeah, I have a few songs, you know. Yeah. I could uh, start off with... Hmm. What's to start off with? That's tricky. Tricky. Uh, well, just make sure I have the last bit. The last bit in the nightmare song always trips me up, so let me just run over that in my head to make sure I'm not going to be sad. But I do have to ask how long how long these songs are. <laughs> that's a good question i don't know four minutes maybe is that how, how long is too long no four minutes is four minutes uh, well i don't know what do you think yeah we can do a four, full four minute song mm -hmm. four minutes two minutes yeah that, that would be good it's just that when we had you on a cheesecakes episode 
Oh, the Sherlock Holmes story. Yeah, yeah Sherlock I, Holmes I to... story took 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but in fairness, oh I, hadn't gotten, I, I hadn't gotten any sleep that day. I was running on empty. My, my, my estimation powers were off. Well, your commitment was also admirable, and that is ever Thank appreciated, you. but I just noted the side effect. Yeah, no, you, 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 you make a good point. So just until chat starts typing tomato, tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> I'm liking this river. I know, it's so pretty. Oh, it looks like we're oh, kinda... sorry, sorry, in tomato. <laughs> it's pronounced tomato, actually. Here, here at Cozy Talk Show, we stand heirloom tomatoes. We yeah. stand our people. What does RP stand for? Received, Received pronunciation. pronunciation. Basically, Prester's accent. That's the word for how for Prester's accent. Okay. Yes, yes. Fancy Ash British. I, I, I could just, you, you could confuse a lot of people, you know, by talking about being really into RP, but it's not role playing, it's received pronunciation. Why not both? Why not both? Yeah, good point. Good, darn good question. If my character dies in a dance game, maybe I'll, I'll roll a new one, that, that, and I'll try to sound like you. Mm. Yeah, that would be fun. I, I really did like a Scottish accent. That's, that was quite charming. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to get good at it someday, but <laughs> this is not that day. Your Scottish accent's pretty good. Been trying to practice. Yeah. I want to learn more like Victorian turns of phrase so I can, you know, amp up the the Lucretius. I, I can help. I, love Lucretius. I can help. You can help. Uh, yeah. Trick is one of the tricks is to say "I'll be bound" a lot. What does it mean? Sort of like um, I'm certain, or, 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 like I'll be I'll be bound. We're going to have rain today. I can't even remember his voice right now. Oh. Well, hello, children. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll be bound. <laughs> that, it's not even the. That's not even. That was pretty close. Yeah, Mister Kizuke. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony is it? Well, I have to rewatch my own damn voice. All right, sing for us, Prester. We demand right. a song. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. Love unrequited robs me of my rest. Love, hopeless love, my ardent soul encumbers. Love, nightmare like, lies heavy on my chest and weaves itself into my midnight slumbers. When you're lying awake with a dismal headache and reposed to boot by anxiety, I can see you may use any language you choose to indulge without impropriety. For your head is on a fire, breath does conspire, a useful stumble up under you. Must your counterpane and girls and uncovers your toes and your cheeks is married from under you. The blade king, because you fight with pickers so terribly sharp as the pricking. Your heart and your trust, you tumble and toss with nothing tricks, doing the ticking. Then the bed clicks the sore and a heap and you become a lap in a tangle. Next to a pillow reclines and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. And you get to the pose in the form of a dose hot eyeballs and head of aching. But your slumbering team such terrible dreams that you really much better be waiting. We dream of crossing a channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is lying between a large bathing machine and a very second class carriage. You're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat to a party of friends and relations. They're round this hall and they all keep aboard at some square and that's Kensington Station. And down on that journey, you find you're returning who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, but you don't get surprised when he tells you he's only 11. Or you're driving like mad with a singular lad by the Bible ship, Tower Formula, and you're playing around games and he tells you, calls you bad names, and you tell him that ice with a dinner. But this you can stand so throw up your hand, you find you as cold as an icicle. In your Certain your socks back, so school clocks crossing souls by a plan on a bicycle. And he and the crew on bicycles too, which they somehow rather invested in. And he's telling the tiles of the particulars of the company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get a low price off it and cough mixtures to cables, which tickle the sellers by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good space and perhaps more treads to take off his boots with a boot tree. This lake will take root and his things will shoot. No blossom the bud like a fruit tree. Then the green goes to tree you get grapes and green pea, cauliflower, pineapple, and cranberry, or the pastry chef plants, cherry brandy will grab, apple possum three corners and bamboo. The shares are a penny, and ever so many are taken by Rothschilds and Berings, and just as a few are allotted to you, you awake with a shudder despairing. 
You are a regular regular chicken American. No wonder you small hats in the phone. You can piss me yourself. Just into your flesh. If you like to see you fuck, up in your tongue, you'll find you lying on a cat and chosen a paper shell. Then it's just in general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. But it's daylight at last. The darkness is past. The night has been long. Ditto, ditto, my song. And thank goodness they're both of them over. Is that it? That's it. You can be forgiven for thinking about more, but thank you. I'm happy about wait. Bravo. That was amazing. <laughs> that thank was you. sick. Dude, chat is going ape shit. <laughs> Rap God. <laughs> dude, they're going oh. ape shit. I'm getting ideas, dude. Like, you could end each show <laughs> with a new song. <laughs> yeah, but I've got a few more. I I've memorized far too many Gilbert and Sullivan songs. Yeah. And other songs, too. Folk songs. Tom Lehrer songs. Dude, chat is going crazy. <laughs> That was extremely impressive. How do you go that fast? Uh, well, the, the trick is that I'm, I naturally speak very fast. I used to I used to have a speech impediment, still sort of do. Uh, in trying to over, when I, you see, well, that's, that's my backstory. That's my, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before. When I went to a proper school, because I was homeschooled for the first, for, well, up till eighth grade, where I was homeschooled. So in eighth yeah. grade, I went to the private Catholic school and I suddenly I had to um, be halfway intelligible and so I made an effort to slow down my speech to enunciate and before I knew it I had the accent because that's how you oh, train not before I did not have it before no I just had like a pretty standard Southern Californian accent I think you're, you're... it wasn't deliberate it was just... Wait, well, where did, did you go to school in England though no it was in Southern California this was all in Southern California what? I, I don't I, I it's bizarre I, I, I like the idea that you just sounded like a total surfer bro. I know it probably wasn't that, but just the idea that you're like right. a surfer bro. Just, <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would be hilarious. Who just going, trained you know, hard. Yeah, you know, I have wondered. Wait. Yeah. I mean, I'm going. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, just, just I hadn't heard the, the... This is the most Prester lore I've heard. You know what I mean? That's the most... Uh, unified presentation of the Prester lore that I've heard. Wait, so are you from Southern California? Did yeah, you, I've, uh, have I you only... ever lived in England? What's happening? <laughs> I've never been outside the country to my great regret. I intend to fix what? that. No, 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 God. I, I, I spent three years in Missouri. So you just have to, he spent three years in Missouri. Okay, that's the extent of it. You just have to accept what the guy is saying. I know it, it. It stretches belief. I make no I'm sense. Saying. I make no sense, which is why I'm going uh, again. I was in the. I was in the. Uh, I was in the Twitter space the other night, and I just okay, fine, yeah, sure. I'm from England. I wasn't. I was just. I don't know. I was late, and I wasn't going to bother going through the standard explanation again. So I was just like, sure, fine. I live in. I live in New uh, Newcastle upon Tyne, and I watch EastEnders and so on and so forth. I would not find watching EastEnders. I'm sorry, <laughs> that is not posh enough. No, it isn't. I was, but this was very spur of the moment. It was like, uh, uh, no, but oh, in, in actuality, I don't watch EastEnders. I do love the original Upstairs Downstairs, though. There you have Sorry, it. This is just blowing my entire mind. Wait, <laughs> so do people give you shit for this in real life? Because, you know, I may or may not have been wanting to adopt an English accent and learn to do it perfectly and just oh, do they, they, all the time. They love, they love it. They love it. No, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like free charisma. I, I really don't seem to care. It's like, oh, where are you from? And I, and then I give them the explanation. I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be really cool. And I've been, I just went around and told like, oh, you could do voice acting. Or it, it, it's, it's like, I, I mean, honestly, if I weren't, if I was so inclined, if I weren't, you know, a very scrupulous person, I could probably start a course. <laughs> you, should, you should start a cult, or at least a Twitch channel. Well, I, I should. I should definitely start a Twitch channel. <laughs> Damn, wait, so if I just ask oh. British trivia, it's just going to be like, wow. <laughs> I don't know or enough. You, like... I don't know enough British TV shows to make the joke, but it's just like if you watch X for enough seasons, this just happens to you. <laughs> yeah, like, well, um, in this case, I guess, yeah, like, um, let me give a list of them. Like, uh, the Fry and Laurie, Jeeves and Wooster, All Creatures Great and Small, Doctor Who, uh, sort of other things. There it is. Yeah, hearing you talk always puts me in the mind of Jeeves and Wooster. Like, I feel like I'm I'm watching the show. It's great. 
Oh, somebody mentioned Misfits in chat. Fuck yeah. Highly <laughs> underrated show. I don't know what that is. It's the... a show about juvenile delinquents who get superpowers, but like... Uh-huh. It's as fucked up as you could imagine, and probably significantly more fucked up than that. Yeah. Um. Hold on. What is the... Is it called the Atlantic or Mid-Atlantic accent? Uh, Transatlantic, I think. Transatlantic? Yeah, and uh, that's a cool accent. Wouldn't mind having that. So that's one that intrigues me, because it, it it feels more... Like, it is American, right? It, it Isn't that an American... I think it's a fake accent that was created by a voice instructor that was teaching all the Hollywood people. Right. And in all those movies, they have that shit. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. Wandry's um, asking if we can ask a question of you in American accent. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, prepare to have your ears rated. It won't. I'm uh, ready, man. Yeah, but that's all American accents, bro. I mean, that's... that's this is how we live. <laughs> this is what it's uh, like to be us. You live like this? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Well, I'll, start, I'll, I'll just start by trying to turn the British military gradually. Like, the quick brown... Fox jumps over the lazy dog. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Quick brown fox jumps over. Quick, quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Quick brown fox. Quick brown fox. And that's probably not American enough. By I don't know. I could try try a, like a. You have not varied from your original thing at all. <laughs> not even <laughs> slightly. Not even slightly. Uh, howdy. Would partner. it help if you imitated us? <laughs> wait, 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 we got a howdy. I could, try imita- I could try imitating you. I, yeah, um, Im- imitate I, me. I, I, Say, I, I am Michael okay. Kersey. Welcome to Philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. I am Michael Kersey. Well, no, I just can't do it. I just got it. <laughs> it's fucking killing me. Better thing. I, I am Michael Kersey. Welcome to... No, I can't. <laughs> Kersey, I think you have a slight regional accent, but I, I'm bad at it. It sounds vaguely East Coast somehow, like New York or something, but I don't know what. Is that accurate? Is there... What word do you catch it in? That's a good question. I mm, I don't know. You might have to say more things, and then I'll point it out. I could talk more about how I'm walking or flying a plane through Iceland on a talk show with press. Anne, you say Anne. Anne. Uh, Anne. What did I say? On a talk show, Anne. Yeah, Anne. Anne, a talk show. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. Oh, the plane is crashing now. Um, <laughs> I, I did. Big point. I, yeah, so I did grow up in the Midwest. So it's possible oh, it's a Chicago. It's possible it's, oh, it's a Chicago it thing. Chicago. Chicago. Say apartment. Apartment. Wait, that sounded normal, I think. Apartment. But well, maybe he wanted press. Oh, you do enunciate your R's. Who, me? Yeah. Yes, I have a bunch of Midwest. I have a bunch of Midwestern relatives, I guess as evidenced by the fact I was in Missouri for three years. But uh, they, they, they say things like, they don't say wash, they say wash. They don't say wash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like Tuesday or whatever. <laughs> or no, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Warsh. I remember I had a teacher that said Warsh, and I thought that was the funniest <laughs> thing. I mean, my grandpa said funny. I'm gonna screw with the. Are there like people under the age of seventy who say that though? Who who say what? Who say Warsh? Riddle doodle. Oh, I've got Riddle Doodle. I mean, uh, that's a good question. I mean, because I guess the two relatives I can think of who definitely say it are probably over 70. But I feel like the children say it too. So I think it's just a general Missouri thing. Wow. I just can't imagine, like, a child saying Warsh. Yeah, I, I guess I I couldn't imagine. In fairness, I couldn't imagine a child doing it either. I think you have to be like a woman or a man. I guess why not even a man do it too? So I guess you just have to be like above the age of 30. To say it, that's that's my view. But I switched us to uh, ethereal evening pink. Oh wow! I thought I had looked away for a second and <laughs> day time changed. It's, it's, it's very pretty. It, it's very pretty. Yeah, I like to catch the light on the wings, you know. Yes, if you want, if you want to use the washing machine, you have to put in a quarter. Washing. Yeah, quarter water. Do you want to get in chat, Riddle Doodle? It's Redidel Dwarl. It's not that hard to pronounce. I'm going to die on this hill. Redidel Dwarl. In these parts, we, we we say it how God intended, which is Riddle Doodle. 
Rididdledwall. Rididdledoodle. Howdy, partner. I'm from the great state of Texas, and whenever I go to watch Pagliacci, I love I loved the part where he says Riddledoodle. <laughs> But Doodle, you should get up. We'll wake you up. Yes, this, this is e energizing. <laughs> so it's like an adrenaline rush just being on here on Kersey's talk show, yeah, watching dude. the plane, doing loop de loops. I mean, good grief, that's going to be. I'm just losing my mind thinking about your accent, Prester. It, 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 is, it is rather uh, confusing. It is very. Uh... You've opened my mind to the possibilities. Yeah, I don't know my what else I believe is false now. You know what I mean? I feel like this is the hole in my worldview. I'm like, what else do I? Yeah, believe? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm holding a whole bunch of things. I'm just, I'm, I'm the universe's idea of a joke. That is what... Hopefully, a good one. Hopefully, a good joke. We we could all aspire to that. I'm gonna click country. I would ask you to teach us RP, but I'm worried that you can't actually hear the difference between the accents. <laughs> <laughs> House grooves. Well, thanks for the song, Presser. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. That was a great fun. Totally. Trial. No, I did enjoy it. It was magnificent. It was excellent. I, I, I will jump at the opportunity to sing Gilbert and Sullivan in front of an audience. All right. Oh, wait. Riddle Doodle's in the lobby. Hold on. Riddle dude. Hell yeah, Riddle. Yay! And you know, like the, the, the thing I was doing right when uh, the pandemic hit, I was, it was I was actually in a hello. Riddle doodle. Yo. Good morning. Yo. Yo. Yo yo yo. How did you sleep? I'm hearing everything twice. I need to mute the Discord. I think. Or yes. The, Echo. The, yeah. Mute the, the Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them's okay. the rules. Oh, it's too cold. What up? We're just chilling with with Goblin odds. What up, Gob? Not much. How's it going? We're mostly roasting each other's accents. I think at the moment. Yeah. I'm I mean... Finished. I'm still in Twitter jail. Wait, if Teddy is in the audience, I what? super blame you. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what? Ha yeah, how do you do that? That's a crime. I mean, that they put you in jail was a crime, not you being. I in jail. Told, um, I tweeted at Teddy that we would uh, start a suicide pact when I was doing my taxes. Fucking um, classic. <laughs> oh yeah, it, 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 it's that'll do it, I guess. It's a shame. And I'm fucking pretty... hate crime against people with depression. It is. Literally, who, <laughs> who would report that, except for Teddy himself, who was mad that I made fun of him that entire time that he was in Twitter jail. Oh, fuck. That, so thing, you had, that, that thing you did with the spaces was great, where you was like, you, you said, okay, well, I'm going to let you speak, and then you just cut it off. To, <laughs> and it was, it, oh, hold on, but do you have any confirmation, or do you merely suspect that Teddy is I merely suspect, because who else would report? The, who even would see that tweet? I mean, it's, pro it's, it's possible that Twitter just... Uh, it's probably possible that Twitter just, like, you know, automatically detects the word suicide. <laughs> I, that's, what, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm extremely cautious to actually, like, even on Twitter, just to actually even joke about uh, violence, because I know I know that it, it could very easily get wind up, result in my getting, like, put in Twitter jail. Because it, the never, algorithm has no sense of humor. I've never been in Twitter jail before. This is my first time. So what happens? You just can't log. Can you scroll? Can or you just can't do anything? I think I could before. So, I, I clicked to appeal it because I was like, this is obviously a joke. Mm. And then ever since I clicked that stupid appeal button, they're like. Oh, this account doesn't have a verified email address. Give us your email address. Um, yeah, and then I guess that's the only way to appeal. But also it means I can't scroll. I can't look at anything. The only page that shows up every time I open the app in, or open it on browser is like verify your email address. And I'm like, I'm not giving you another fucking email address, Jack. Like this one, is, <laughs> this account is just tied to my phone number and I don't 
Oh, so you might be in Twitter jail until until you comply. No, 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 no way, right? It should just be like once the timer is up. They they said it was a 12-hour ban or whatever. Okay, so... Uh, look, yeah, on one, hand, on one hand, yeah, Twitter Twitter's uh, support apparatus for getting unsuspended or whatever is very, is very Kafka-esque. It's like, oh, here, uh, give us your number, we'll call you, we'll give you this code, this string of numbers, and they do, and then you put it in and it doesn't work. Or at least that was the case mm. some years ago. But um, by the same token, if you just, like, go to... Go to whatever the sub customer support thing is on the website and just say, yo, uh, this was, I got, I got mistake. I, this was a mistake. Um, they will very probably unsuspend you. So if you can just get an actual human involved, they're probably good. Soren claims 12 hour countdown doesn't start until you comply. Or no. Well, so, Soren might not know. Soren might not know this fact. You might just been be banned before though. No, because, um, yeah, no, because, God damn it! Wait. Because again, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, since I'm like you know dispensing Preston law, I might as well uh, mention that. So, um, at uh, the account I'm currently using, uh, it was my second Twitter incarnation. I made it back in 2017, but then got quickly got suspended because I, I followed too many accounts in too short a period of time. Right? I thought it was a, I was a bot. And so years later, like back in March of this year, I thought, okay, solid. I'm actually going to get active on Twitter again. So um, I just went and I talked. I went to the customer support thing and say, hey, said, "Yo, uh, they, I, they thought I was a bot. I'm not a bot. I'd like to. I'd like to you to unsuspend my account, please." And they did it. And that was that. Nice. Did they do it relatively quickly, or? It was really quick. Yeah, it was like five minutes, two to five minutes later. I, I had an active Twitter account again. I was, I was shocked. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Thor, in that the fact that it was a few years ago probably made some sort of difference. But still, I was just shocked that they were that um, obliging because, again, my experience prior to that had not been like getting an actual human involved as opposed to uh, Kafka-esque machines. Word. Not, not, not to know if anything against machines, you know. I think, uh, I mean, machines are the future and all that. But yes, yes, certainly. Do you think they process support tickets from blue checks faster? I mean, that would. Not to right, just because of like the implications for like someone for someone say I don't know hacking a celebrity's or a politician's account or something. Or I, mean, I imagine I imagine checks have to get some. I think we're having a little bit of uh, audio clipping, so I'm gonna I'm gonna boot you, Prester. All right. Um, it's probably I I could turn the noise filter back on, but yeah. Anyway, this was very good. Thank you for uh, having me on. You're a very wonderful host. Oh, thank gracious. you. Thank you. I always love to have you. Thank you. Ta ta. Ta ta. He said ta ta. Yo. Uh, Yo. So I should know in basically an hour because that's when uh, that's when I noticed last night that I had, I had been banned, mm -hmm. I've been suspended. But if it doesn't let me back in, then I'm gonna be really fucking pissed. Do you think you could add an email account and then remove it later and maybe they don't keep it forever? Yeah, no, I can. I just don't fucking want to. No, yeah. Can you give them like a secondary email address that's like like a burner email address? I think there's also a thing where you can, um, if you have a Gmail Gmail account, you can, uh, oh, you don't want to give them your, your mind if you haven't given it yet. Otherwise, if you had given them your Gmail address, you can add a plus one after the stuff that comes before at Gmail or a plus two yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I used to do, I feel like a lot of websites don't let you do that anymore because I used to do that a lot. Um, you, you could open up like a Proton Mail account or something. I, I have one, but I, I tried to log in last night. I couldn't remember my fucking, what, I couldn't even remember the email address. Right. <laughs> um. But yeah, I I definitely can. Um, in fact, I think I I started a new Gmail just recently. Actually, uh, Moth knows. Um, you could even get a friend. You could even use a friend's email address. Yeah, the the whole reason I won't use a burner is because they'll like they attach it to your account, and then if I forget my password, which I am like contractually obligated to do. Right. Um, then 
basically I won't be able to get back in. They'll be like, oh, we sent it to your email address. And I'm like, well, that email address was a burner and I probably don't even remember the email. So I basically need to just, if they won't let me in, give them an email that I can actually access. Right. Have a riddle doodle email that you use for all of your Twitter, off Twitter interactions. Yeah, I have, um, I mean, I have honestly too many emails. I don't know how this happened. Yep. I don't, I'm not good at being a non, so I just do everything under my actual name and don't think oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah that's how I started my account, so I don't really give a fuck about OpStack at this point. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I assumed uh, odds that you were in a non account. But nope, I, I, I yeah. came in a non account, but right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I, people can still find me easily. I mean, I'm 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 beyond findable. I mean, my fucking Twitch channels called this, my YouTube channel, but I still wonder whether I would like at some point just kind of changing my name and picture to something else on Twitter and just having the vibe be kind of under that. The vibe is really enjoyable. Mm. It's fun to at least try it, yeah. but it's like the easiest way to try it without confusing everybody is if you change each thing, like if you stagger it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's more of a commitment, I guess, than just like testing it out, taking it for a spin. Well, I've thought yeah. about. You're gonna say doodle. I was just gonna say that um, making, just making an alt and then you know you're that all like if you don't care about keeping all of your current followers then making it all is pretty easy but you know my experience with the alt doodle yeah but not that one that, i mean he just can't figure out how to <laughs> use an alt he's like <laughs> makes this mads mickles hey, hey, hey you don't have to dox my whole alt oh my god yes what? no 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 <laughs> All right, fine. Do, do, do I love that Kersey is in groups resident boomer, even though you're not anywhere near the oldest one. You said I'm in group. What did you say? You're in groups resident boomer. Yeah, yeah. Did is that a thing? Am I the resident boomer? Let's have a Twitter poll. <laughs> we can do a mm. Twitch poll. The, the uh, Twitch poll. so Lithros is like that. Dude's like. I don't know, 85 years old? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I would not be surprised if Lithros was actually like 25. You know? He's just like fucking one of those like, people who has old man energy and has had old man energy <laughs> since he was like 11. Uh huh. <laughs> what, he's, what, here. he's here. He's been silent for like two hours. Pops back in when he hears his name. <laughs> hey, Lithros, are you still yeah. 24? No, I love this. Lithros is the zoomer of the in group boomers. And I'm the boomer of the in-group, like, millennials or something like that. I'm offended by that, Ari, because I feel like I'm the zoomer. Because people keep comparing me to Parafactual and to Acid Chill, who are, like, the two youngest in-group members. Yeah, you can know, you can be the zoomer of the millennials. Right, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm fine with this then. Gobs gives off strong zoomer vibes. Genix just doesn't have a good one word name. Oh. No. Oh, you're right. Doomers? <laughs> right, Doomers. <laughs> yeah, yeah press it does not compute for me either that I'm older than Kurzy. So, it, so, someone said trad vibes. I do think that when I had the mustache and also I had a pretty short on the size haircut, I, I was described. Someone randomly logged on one of my streams and asked what my politics were and then they said never mind oh, with that God. haircut you're definitely right wing or something like that um there's a signal i suppose yeah i wonder if you actually seen that old now or if i'm just like retaining memory of yeah well yeah uncle energy totally <laughs> uncle energy what do i make of this i don't it's because you guys are so fucking immature. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's like ah. Uh, That's fair. I feel like everyone. Okay, this is this is offensive, and I, I have beef. I have beef with everybody. It just hasn't quite erupted yet. I try to make it erupt, but it hasn't erupted yet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we'll see if we can draw it out of you. What's uh? Can you tell us a little bit about this? I feel like okay. Um, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. 
Have you been involved in any of the coziness discourse? I don't think so. I didn't know there was discourse. I thought we just were cozy. So, m people like to say there is no coziness discourse, but that's just because they haven't been paying attention. <laughs> it's Uncle Curzy's beef what, what, barbecue. What's the, di <laughs> what's the discourse? I'm just saying I've been I've been I've been persecuted on Twitter for not being cozy enough. I've been judged by some people in the in group to not be cozy enough. I know that this has been made. Some shit has been talked and you know decisions, you know, vibes. I gotta change the music. I can't deal with these fucking this is, sorry, I, I know you're not even hearing it. The cyberpunk's too intense though. I just don't have anything good. Um chill piano. I, I wanna hear from these people who think you're not sufficiently cozy. They're out there and they're and you know them. All right. You know I'm sure these I people. do. You know I'm them. I'm sure I'm one of them. <laughs> In, well, I mean, it depends what you think. I'm just saying, people have thought this, and um, I think just maybe I'll just go with no music or I don't know. And here's my beef I feel like people are trying to regress. Okay? This is my beef. This is why I come up as Uncle Curzy, the boomer millennial, is that I feel like I'm trying to become an adult, and everybody's trying to become a, ch a kid. That's how I feel about it. Thoughts? Yeah, that's right. Oh, Wait. yikes. Something was very loud. What just happened? Sorry, yeah, there's a motorbike or something. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, unclear to me whether we're mm, aiming to become childish in like a fake sort of way, or whether it's more like okay, we tried the pretending to be adults th thing and it didn't work, so now we're embracing the fact that we're mentally children and that's fine. Mm. And maybe it's one and it feels like the other is still in the pretending to be an adult phase. Oh my god, yeah, you're right. Oh my god, and Wandre, Kersey still believes in adults. You're right, we're actually the enlightened adults who, who have recognized that adulthood is a scam. Are you, though? That's why, that's Are why you, though? he's been accused of not cozy enough. Wait, 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 go on, Riddle Doodle. I feel like you're having an insight here. Oh, wait, no, but I'm the one who started the, uh, the... Oh, damn it, I can't even link to it, but... The tweet where I changed your name from Curzy to Cozy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Wandry was trying to be complimentary. Wait, people have said oh, so many things here. Oh, wait, the chat is wait, the chat is saying fascinating things and I missed all these. You like dad things. <laughs> That's hilarious. I imagine Curzy has this deep rival with me rivalry with me and I'm not even paying attention, says Ari. That's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. I love that. That's very funny. Um Wait, this again. Uncle Cur Thanksgiving, you rants about cur Curzy discourse. Yes. Um, I've heard of a mythical cozy chat. That's probably where this discourse happens. Listen, no comment. No comment. <laughs> um, behind closed, quilted doors. I don't know about anything like a cozy this is chat. It's a boomer game for sure. <laughs> Flight Sim is a boomer game. They're under the. God, there's so many things saying. Aspirational neotenist. Curzy still believes in men and women. I need more music, but I need the music to go back down. I just need something more chill. I want it play more good. I mean, these are your boomer vibes. I don't know what to tell you. I'm a boomer too. It's okay. You're not a You're boomer. You're a boomer, Lynn? I am a super boomer. I'm pretty You've sure. You've had cool teenager vibes probably since you were born. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, sick. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Riddle Duel is like, oh, cool. I feel like even in college, it was like, it, I felt like you were the cool teenager that I somehow <clears throat> the old person was trying to impress. <laughs> I've gotten that a lot, which is so funny to me because I always felt like a boomer even before people were really using that term a lot. <laughs> Shit. I wonder if it was just because, like, you always looked serious and you would listen to headphones all the time. So it's just yeah. like, I don't know, and you, like, dressed cool and stuff. I don't know. You just have, like, cool teen vibes. You're like Steve Buscemi, hello, fellow kids, except an actual teenager. So that doesn't really make any sense. Excellent. I love I love that vibe. Um, I mean, the headphones thing, yeah, I don't know. I think it makes more sense now, or, now that I realize that... Um, I don't know, I'm just too ADHD to fucking 
deal with stimulus that I don't control. Mood. Oh, I'm just fucking. And then me. yeah, I think a lot of, I mean, we we in this chat right now, as in me and hers, are mm. older than a lot of the people in the Twitter corner. And that's what makes me feel like a boomer too. But but literal <laughs> age, I think, is not part of it because because like Lithros is a counterexample. You know. I think people is Lithros is a zoomer. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. I, I think that people think I'm a cop. This is the battle. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Holy shit, yes. <laughs> you seem like you would be a cop. Okay, I seem like I would be a cop, have but I... Have you ever dressed up as a cop? Because you would look so, so much like a cop. I have a video of me... Hold on, let me just see if I can dig this up. Or like a stripper cop, at least. <laughs> like a hot yes. cop? Yes. That's not so <laughs> bad. Not to objectify you in public, but... I don't mind. I'm cool. <laughs> Hold on, let me find... God, I'm just looking at these old pictures of me of me and my stash. I kind of miss it. Kind of miss it. Yeah, before we knew you were a cop, but she's turned you into a narc. Uh, Anna Malik is saying, cop shaving the cop stash to go undercover with the Zoomers. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ari, put on the fucking cat ears, Percy. <laughs> I don't know. Here's a... This is a one of the worst pictures I've ever taken of myself, but I do... These are so awful. Hold on, I'm so close to. Hey, Crazy, do you own cat ears? No comment. I did. Wait, do you not know the lore? Oh, Wait, what man. lore? The lore has been buried. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> of course, you have the glasses. Oh, my God. That's Hold great. On. Ew. I have to play it again. I just like. <laughs> <laughs> there's my there's my Texas cop. <laughs> no, I can't hear it. I'll play it for you later. Ma'am. Ma'am. Oh fuck. I haven't seen the Eigen episode yet. Er, okay, so you have cat ears. Otherwise I was my no, second I, was gonna no. be you have a P.O. box. <laughs> no, no, no. See, yeah, you, you send him some because his fragile masculinity was so upset by wearing Okay, cat ears li no, listen, time. listen. Okay, for some one reason. time that he went he videoed himself going out dramatically <laughs> like a boomer to throw them in the garbage dramatically like a oh boomer that's the most cobbled together bullshit i've ever heard in my life post po yeah, po yeah, box that's crazy. only what a dad would do like oh i've 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 shown the children that i can be silly one time and now <laughs> i'm throwing away the oh my god okay let me explain i am a spiritualist okay and I am stalking through the wilderness, witnessing the way that people uh, think about me. God, this music is way too hype right now. Um, witnessing something happening, okay? And it has to do with masculinity and femininity. That's why Aries said, Kersey still believes in men and women, not girls and boys. There's something about the gender aspect. People trying to feminize me. Okay, I'm not saying who, but there are a couple people who are just really hyped up about the idea of me with the cat ears. They're like, put this on, put that on. I'm not going to put any of that shit on, but there's something about it. And it's there's something about age. There's something about coziness. Okay, and I... Uh, you, oh my God. I smell cat it. Boy, <laughs> crazy. Cat boy, crazy. It's not a feminizing thing. Right. It's not, cat man. Not right, girl. cat man. That's cat what I've been man. trying to say. If you wanted to make me into a cat man, there might be something to talk about. But they want to make me into a cat boy. Listen, Crazy, at a certain point, you just have to accept that the in group uniform is cat ears, high eyes, and chokers. <laughs> so who told you to say that? I like that. Alice keeps tell me. Alice, Alice keeps tagging me in, like, chokers and cat ears shit. <laughs> I'm Which Alice? Uh, uh, just playing. Um, okay, yeah. Is their, their thing. <laughs> Throw curves in your cave filled with cats. And then, <laughs> I'm not even going to say. Man, even hearing you enumerate what you want to do is so adorably boomerish. I'm telling you, but this is the thing. Are, do you hear me? Are you are you hearing this odds? Are you hearing my spiel? I, I, know, yeah, I, I know Riddle Doodle doesn't care, but... Um, 
I don't care. I am a spiritualist, and I'm and I'm stalking through the wilderness of the modern era, and I smell on the wind my prey, which is confusion and disorientation in the absence of wisdom, okay? And I can sense it in the people around me and what they want me to be and how they want me to change. And I am not imposing anything about them. I just note they make strange allegations, like that I am an uncozy individual. But there's something racked up. We are in the culture. Like, this is what it is to be in the culture. We are making the culture right now. We are deciding what it is and how the future goes. He will be girled soon. Alhamdulillah. You're stalking through the wilderness with <laughs> fully cozy phrase i've ever heard i know because yeah. I, because hold on, hold on. <laughs> you guys know in charlie brown when the adults talk and they're like wah, 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 wah. <laughs> that's all i just heard Chris, like, you gotta oh, make a video yeah. for everything you do. I would make a I would make a video if you can show me how to make it. I don't know if I have it down. I'm too much of a boomer to have read enough Charlie Brown or something. I'm just the parent. I'm a Calvin's dad. <laughs> Wait, do you not even know the reference, man? Maybe you are a zoomer. No, <laughs> no, I know the reference. Charlie Brown movies. I know we could watch. I want to do some offline uh, movie shit, so we could we could watch some Charlie Brown. There's another one I wanted to watch. Um, Me and Gobbs just did it the other day during your fucking Teddy stream because you right, don't know what seasons yeah. are. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait, season? <sighs> yeah, because he, the whole reason we planned it that day was because, like, I wouldn't usually plan something over Kersey's stream, but we Thank planned you. it that day because I thought nothing was happening because he said that the seasons were over, or that the season was over. And then, next thing I know, it's like, oh, Teddy is coming on the show. And it's like, what the fuck is a season? Okay, all I'm saying all I'm saying is that I think at this point, for 24 weeks, every single Tuesday, there has been a thing in this slot on my channel. So <laughs> That's an impressive run. Thank you. I am impressed by it. I even got a laptop, so I'm, I'm going to travel so I can stream while I travel. I'm going to have to resell that shit so I don't take a huge loss, but I'm cool with it, you know. Thank you, Ari. There was an intermission in which we watched The Brain, which would not die. Man, I need to fucking actually use Discord so I don't miss all of the events all the time. We can try to tag you and stuff more. <sighs> I need a personal assistant who just tags me on Twitter. Oh yeah. yeah. I think I check. Don't check DMs. <laughs> Just, yeah. Like almost eigen level of not checking DMs. Yeah. Being yeah, dead. Because you you would have missed the movie too because you were avoiding the DMs where we were just like, hey, you want to watch a movie? <laughs> Wait, is there a different movie? No, just like, I think that you weren't in the one um, with Simpop and uh, Disco where we were talking about watching the movie. You didn't show up for like a couple days when you were like, oh yeah, sounds <laughs> good. I think I, I set the alarm on my phone so that it would go off 30 minutes before the movie and then I completely erased it from my memory. And then the alarm went off and I was like, it's time to watch the movie. Oh, nice. This is how I Excellent. live. <laughs> yeah. No, that's how I put everything in my calendar if I need to remember it. Otherwise, it's gone. I can't remember to check calendars. <laughs> I just need the sound no. thing. No, and yeah, but like the calendar has an automatic, uh, automatic reminder thing, like thirty minutes before. Oh, that's good. Head empty, yeah, all thoughts and, then... and calendar. Who yes. made spiritual progress, Kersey? Who are you talking about? No one. Myself. Okay. Oh my God, <laughs> Kersey, you're. This is another boomer thing. You think the, the youngins are out to get you. You think they're trying to make the frogs gay and you into a pink pill or whatever. No one is trying Aerie to make Aerie just them. said. Oh, everyone to take the pink pill. Aerie literally just said, I didn't say I wouldn't pink pill you. Okay, but that's, that's Aerie. Oh my god, wait. Of... Hey, Kersey, tell us what you said um, when, when you found out that taking estrogen boosts your intuition. Oh, I said it. That's that's awesome. What did I, you tell them? What I said. What did I say? I don't if I recall know. correctly, it was something very close to um, "Never have I wanted to take estrogen more, more than I do in this moment." Yeah, it's because well, it's for it's for the it's for this uh, it's to sense things. It's to sense the subterranean. That's what I want. Can you try it once? I mean, I think so. I mean, I don't know when it has effects, though. And... Oh, it takes some time to, like, kick in. 
I don't know. I'm sure there are people in chat who know more than I do about hormones. No, yeah, but... yeah. You just take it one time. You just take one estrogen pill and then you're a woman. That's how it works, <laughs> Curse. <laughs> there was a doctor wow. who was trying to microdose estrogen. Um, like a male doctor who's microdosing not for any gender effects. I forget why. Um, but he right. accidentally like macrodosed or, you know, wow. took whatever. He took a fuck ton and I think he started growing boobs. Something happened, but he like felt really fucking weird. And it basically experienced gender dysphoria for the first time. Oh, for, for the other, for, in what way? Right. Because he accidentally had like right. womaned himself a little bit. Um, right. But I, I know there are some permanent effects, but I don't know how much, are, like how permanent anything is on estrogen. I've looked more into testosterone. Right. The, the the type of I mean you know obviously it's not it sounds like it's a complicated thing that one needs to take seriously but if it were take a hit for a day I mean you know what I mean for sure I don't know yeah right I'm just too curious about the mind to not take a crack he'd at do it do it for a day and then he'd dramatically film himself throwing away the bottle in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're yeah, saying is. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, what you're saying is probably more interesting. I was just going to say, so it, you have to look at Riddle Doodle's position. She's like, no one's trying to feminize you. If your masculinity can handle it, blah, blah, blah. And then compares wearing cat ears to, to literally taking estrogen. Like, I don't know. I would not be named Michaela. I would go for something. No one's named Michaela. You need an alt that's just a girl. Girl alt. Yeah, I pl I played a middle aged uh, vampire lawyer, uh, female vampire lawyer in a what? Vampire the Masquerade game. Very nice. Yeah, you should just have an alt for her. Oh yeah, that's interesting. She's a real bitch though. Great. That sounds right. I think if Cruz was a woman, he'd be a bitch. Because <laughs> he's pretty bitchy as a man already. Excuse like me, savage. princess. <sighs> Snow or funny, I can't figure out what it is. I, I feel like there are lots of dudes in rationalist circles that are masculine, but they're masculine more just in that they lift and they're not like totally girly nerds. But right. you actually just seem like a dude who just like accidentally stumbled into this area, even though you have legit rat cred, like you just seem like a random dude. And <laughs> so I think we all like making fun of you because you're like oddly normal seeming. Uh huh. I'm oddly like, normal seeming, but I'm not here. too normal. And a and a and a is completely destroying our entire community. <laughs> this is a weird baseline for what seems masculine in the community. So, but the thing is, I'm okay. This is the thing. I'm only I only read as a normie to a person who has a rigid concept of broad social categories, and they're not actually looking at me, right? Yeah, you just described autism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to say you just described literally everyone, but that's good to you, yeah. But nor normies don't like post long videos ranting about syncretism and how they're upset that like people don't wreck blah 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 and that's like. Whatever. You're like the Joe Rogan of rationalists. The Joe Rogan. In every way. That's true, but also you know there are, I just ignore those videos when you post them. That's no, I that's that doesn't. Which I'm cool with, by the way. I just want to be clear. I don't expect my my friends to read my watch my weird videos. I anyway, it's not it's not a requirement. <sighs> well, can we go back to roasting objectivists? I'm very upset that I missed that part roasting? of the show. No, we were praising yes. objectivists, Lindsay. What are you oh, talking about? Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Wait, Wait did you right. change? <laughs> uh, what? Did you change? I don't I know what you mean. Objectivists are incapable of change. I, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, once once an objectivist, always an objectivist. Absolutely, it's in our blood. You <laughs> guys talk money. about objectivists. I'm going to order myself some fried chicken. Fuck yeah. Are we supposed to, like, remind you about your diet and try to persuade you not to? Or just cheer you on? Uh, I'll order something. Eat fried chicken, then eat some of the shit that he eats when he's on his diet, which is just like chicken juice from a can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the most disturbing shit. Yeah. Did you see my thread on that 
odds I <laughs> yeah my crazy mega thread yeah that's when I got hyped about pickles because pickles have like zero calories <laughs> you can eat so many pickles with no problem what's the point of like eating things that don't have calories you get full and you lose weight oh okay yeah yeah same idea with these shakes premier protein brought to you by philosophers on twitch playing flight simulator another dad thing <laughs> Yeah, that's super dad package. Here's another dad thing that I kind of tweeted some kind of like cry for help I'm single type shit and Eigen retweeted me like Kersey would be a great dad. I have never met this guy. Why does he think I would be a great dad? He got dad energy. He got the dad energy. He's got dad energy, but hold on. When did you tweet this? Was I know. I'm the last single, 12 dude. hours? Uh, no, no. I don't remember. I don't remember what, what a fuck Send a link. I want to I fucking retweet. No, no. It, Link it. People, people don't understand my problem. What's your problem? I understand lots of your problems. But lots which of my one problems. Is this? The, Ouch. the. Hold on, I have to get the the soy the soy garlic. See, I'm looking at the soy, and I'm like, they're gonna turn me into a woman. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask, is your problem that you just have really strict notions of what being heterosexual means? Uh, what, yeah. What, that's not my problem. I don't think that that's my problem. That's one of his problems. No, 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 no. You need no, no, no. a trad wife who understands you? <laughs> no comment on any of that. I'm not commenting on those things. I'm simply clicking the Diet Pepsi. Were you dating Power Bottom Dad's wife and then she left you for Power Bottom Dad? <laughs> that would be oh, a damn. really cool origin story. <laughs> um, to my knowledge, it is not true. <laughs> Though you never know with alts. Could be. I don't know who these people are. No, no, no. The thing is, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to flex here. I'm not lacking for inbound interest. Okay, I, that's not my problem. I just, what are you saying? You're selective. Really? I, I, I think, but possibly too selective. But it's not a hotness. It's not that type. You know that there's a thing. It's not that. It's just hard to find. The people. Good woman's hard to find. Good woman's hard to find. You know, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Diet Pepsi, drumsticks. I want to switch this to half and half. Um, everything he says sounds like a boomer. Riddle Doodle, you are. A, why are you mean? What made you mean? <laughs> I mean, I, I, you. If I wasn't suspended, I could just link you to my many threads of my childhood. I don't know what else to tell you. I know you made threads about your childhood, and I didn't really read them, and I believed that it that's, was probably... That's for the best. Because you, cause you don't watch my philosophy videos, so... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I watched the one where you were all, uh, you were, like, dancing, you were doing the robot in slow motion and saying, this is what my body wants to do. Oh, you watched that one. That was a cool one. Yeah. Yeah, because you posted it in Discord and said this is the closest uh, I would get to you being shirtless. Right. And you weren't even shirtless, so it was bait. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Because you're mean. Like, oh, Ari, you're just mean. We don't. We. I. I haven't. I haven't approached that horizon. Ari was born mean. <laughs> no, Lithros. No, you don't. Oh. Lithros. That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. Lithros says, <laughs> "I send." Such a mean thing to do to your depressed friend. <laughs> I send Lynn's childhood threads to my depressed friends to show them that their lives are about wrecked. I would be enraged. <laughs> Oh man, it's fucked up. That's why I can't talk about it in real life, actually, because when I used to talk about it too much, then I'd get all my friends being like, oh, you know, my problems aren't that bad. Mm -hmm. so I just won't talk to you about them. And I'm just like, okay, yes, just isolate me from your life. That is, that's great. What's like the best reaction people can have? Because I feel like there's, I don't know. Like, I mean, people I don't, don't want to... Yeah, I mean, it's a downer. That's why I don't bring it up, you know? But, again, that's sort of how I got into this whole corner of uh, Twitter, is because I had gone overboard, and I used to tell people too much stuff, and it made them feel very close to me, but mm -hmm. also it made a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, and then I went 
I overcorrected in the other direction by just not telling anybody anything. And then I was like, why aren't people close to me anymore? Why don't, why am I having such a hard time making close friends again? And so now I'm trying to find what that middle ground is where, uh, you know, you can be vulnerable, but you don't uh, drive people away with your weirdness. Um, and I don't really know how you're supposed to do it. I feel like the best way is just to use it as a filtering mechanism. The people who are driven away, you just go like, yeah. Yeah, I think so. A little bit, but because I'm, I'm like slightly normy, um, like I've seen, I've seen the way that their side works. <laughs> like it works well in certain things and I can't stand some like super rat things where I'm just like, can you be normal? <laughs> just be normal. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to find the right filtering mechanism where it's like, I let in the people who are just as autistic and normy as me, or like a little bit on either side, but not the ones who are super normy or super rat. I mean, the process you're describing sounds pretty sane. It's just like, try to share stuff, try to not share stuff, realize those are both off in some way compared to what you want. Try something in the middle. I mean, that just seems like they're good. Yeah, it's just hard to find what that middle is, you know? Yeah. But so, but you've been posting, so basically it sounds like part of, uh, part of your middle is having posting under an alt or various alts and then but b then being i guess you you also box it to threads in a way i've sort of seen you commenting on that um but then you do share a lot of stuff pretty straightforwardly yeah um yeah. i sort of i sort of stopped or i've taken a little break from that because i was doing a long thread one of those hundred tweet threads mm. about my childhood and that went on for maybe a couple months because I couldn't get through it and I don't think I finished it because it just uh I felt like it was starting to get um it was starting to get I don't know it just bummed me out every time I went to finish the thread so I was like eh. right um and I just went back to making jokes for a while and that's where I'm at right now uh which I think is fine Aries doing swinging back and forth seems to work. Yeah, Lithros is right. <laughs> everything everything you do is perfect. Never doubt your intuitions. I think I I can uh, I can get there now. Um, but when I did have that mindset when I was like a teenager into uh, early college years, um, thanks in large part to objectivism. And mm -hmm. I don't think it was a, a good, I mean, it was okay to have that mindset then, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't great for <laughs> making friends who weren't assholes. Oh, wait, we, oh, yeah, wait, hold on, let's, I'm just responding to these morons in chat about the Chaos Emerald thing that I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, That's throws... why I liked Odds so much, because Odds was not, you know, you hung out with the, the college conservatives or whatever, and some yeah. of them were douchebags, but you were always cool. Thanks, bro. So... <laughs> It has kind of been a, it, a surprise to me that there, like, even is, like, I don't know, an objectivism scene, like, in the world. Because um, I, I, like you guys, it sounds like, I was into this shit in college and had a few friends and we were kind of, like, in, like, a mini cult about it, basically. But, like, then we all <laughs> sort of moved on in different ways. But I don't know. It just keeps coming up. I guess it's just a super influential, sticky thing in the world. Yeah, we had a, an actual club on campus, so that made it easier to find people, I guess. Right. 
Oh my god, Lithros has a great story. Fuck yeah. Wait, Lithros, just get in chat and say it. That means you have objectives, babies, Lithros. Iron <laughs> Rand go. made your babies. <laughs> Iron yeah, rabies. How could you not name your daughter Ein? <laughs> my god. Ein Hansen. <laughs> She doesn't seem like an Ein. <laughs> my, 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 I almost said my fetish. The opposite. My anti-fetish is people who say Anne Rand. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Hello, Lithros. Hi, what's up? Tell us your tale of woe. Okay, so, um, yeah, and, I was... Of love and romance and revenge. Go ahead. Uh, revenge never really came into it, unfortunately. I was really hoping. So, right. in um, you know high school, I was in this group of friends, and we were all pretty close. And uh, there weren't you know that many uh, eligible girls in the group of friends who were not terrifying. And um, my my closest friend and I, we worked together at Target and had everything in common and talked all the time. We were talking one day, and I was like, you know there's this uh, homecoming coming up. Like, who do you think you're going to ask? And he was like, oh, I'm going to ask this girl. And I was like, you know what? I was going to ask her. And he was like, well, you can't because I want to. And I said, well, we can just both ask her and then she can go with who she wants to go with. Who I was like 100% sure it was me because I'm way better than the guy. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, no, you can't do that. That's not how it works. Like, we're friends. You have to back off. You have to get out of my way and just let me have my shot at this girl. Mm. And I was like, no, because I had been reading The Fountainhead. And I was like, Look, <laughs> there's this very smart lady who has perspective on this. <laughs> it's like, if I do that, if I do something for you, I'm actually hurting everyone, right? It's, right. it's actually morally incumbent on me <laughs> to go for this. I, I can't just stand idly by and let this beautiful, perfect woman wind up with the wrong inferior man because <laughs> I believed in this misguided notion of charity. Dude, you're completely right. Please continue. Yeah, absolutely that. true, yes. And so, you know, uh, it didn't it didn't quite work out as smoothly as you'd think. I was asking some friends for advice on, like, the best way to approach her. Mm -hmm. And they turned around and they told her I was going to ask her out. When I wasn't there, and up. right after they told her, she was like, you know, excited because she did have a crush on me. But she was also mad that she hadn't heard from me because we were in high school and very childish. Mm. And um, right after they told her that, this other guy walked over completely coincidentally and was like, "Hey, you want to go to the homecoming dance?" And she was so mad at me and upset, she accepted his invitation. So no. they were going to the homecoming dance together. And I just stayed home. I did not go to the dance. I just, like, walked into the living room and collapsed onto my knees and gnashed my teeth and pulled up my hair in anguish for a few hours. That's, uh, when, that's when you said, fuck Ayn Rand, I'm reading Moby Dick. <laughs> no, I mean, in the end, it still worked out because, yeah, she went with him, but she was like, I'm not really into him. I'm into that guy. And I was like, yeah, I know you are. So then we went <laughs> to the Valentine's dance together and had a wonderful time. Everything was perfect Much after that. Better. He never forgave me. That friendship was completely destroyed. Um, Sounds like you didn't miss out on anything. Yeah, I mean, he's really not that cool. We still hang out sometimes just because he's so pathetic that he still has to, like, <laughs> pretend to be friends with me. And our friend group is still somewhat intact. Whew. And that's fine. Like, you know, we go over to his house once in a while. Um, but... Yeah, he just, he. I think one time his mom was out the store and ran into my mom, just like shook her head and walked away. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, this is why Ayn Rand is good because there are people who are like cucked into thinking that it, it's a good idea to just be like, I'll step aside and let an immature piece of shit just go get this girl <laughs> who might in a moment of weakness go to homecoming with him. Yeah, he just had all these ideas, and I, I felt none of them really had anything to do with making her happy. And it was really just about, like, fulfilling this dream that he had that was was ultimately self-satisfying, which I respected. But if we're both self-satisfying, I might as well self-satisfy myself first, right? Might as well yeah. self-satisfy. <laughs> He's got some big beta energy right there. Plus, if he was that... really serious about the whole, like, oh, we both like her, so you can't ask her out, he shouldn't be able to ask her out either. Like, we both like her, so no Well, his, his perspective was that he had said that he planned to ask her out first. 
I, I think I got that mixed up in the chat. But he did feel that because the words had come out of his mouth. Legalism. He dibs. Right, right. Legalism. He dibs. He, he dibs, and so as a good friend, it was my duty to step aside, but I am he not that good of a friend. That yeah. <laughs> Anyone who calls shotgun on a person doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Yeah, also... I'm glad you guys agree. Uh, and she's much happier. And, you know, she was kind of... She she should not have gone with him. She should not have gotten his hopes up. She knew the situation. So, as far as his suffering, she bears a little responsibility, but I bear none. I was just <laughs> normal competition. This is a free dating market. And he's not going to put any unfair restraints of trade on me. No, That's thank you. fucking loop, please. Hmm. However, I do want to say that I still feel this way, and if any of you think you have a shot with my wife, you are welcome to go for it. <laughs> and I will just be a friendly competitor with you, as I hoped he would be with me, and I will not have any hard feelings about it. May the best person win. The, the, the gauntlet is, like, eternally thrown down. <laughs> this is Lothros' confidence if we level. don't accept challengers, what incentive <laughs> do we have to keep ourselves in fighting shape? Amen. To, to hustle. Mm -hmm. Everyone in a relationship should just have a Twitter thread where any challengers can mark their names down publicly. <laughs> Few people have taken me up on the offer, which is very disappointing because it's like this wonderful, amazing woman is just sitting here waiting to be wooed. And am I that intimidating? <laughs> Maybe, but I think they should give it a shot. It's worth the risk. I mean, have they seen you playing Quiplash? Have they seen you knowing about video game facts? Like... Have they seen your verbal IQ? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it may be, but there's so much more to life than that. All you need to do is be a slightly better ballroom dancer than me, and she is yours instantly. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. What about dropping Romance of the Three Kingdoms facts? Does that work too? I mean, she likes That's it, for wooing Lithros. <laughs> mostly a thing she indulges in because of me. Um, it's, I mean, she enjoys it. She, she'll, she'll laugh, but it's not really going to put you over on me because it's not important to her. <sighs> it's a weird thing with marriage and how you get wrapped up in each other and your interests become each other's interests. What her about favorite... abs? Abs? Um, yeah, I think abs would probably steal her away very quickly. <laughs> Liz has got this in the bag. <laughs> um, her favorite ballroom dance, I think, was salsa. Um, but she loves them all very much. So if you give her a good ballroom dance of any variety, you're good. Yeah, I mean, stealing me away, that's going to be a little harder because I am really persuasive and I will probably talk everyone into an open relationship situation and not wind up <laughs> stolen at all. Just legal, just sort of pulling the lawyer card. <laughs> there's, some, there's something, there's a strictly superior option. I mean, why give up something that you don't need to give up? There Question you go. Mark, eyebrow waggle. There you go. I will simply rationally argue my wife into divorcing you. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Anyways, that's my story. Uh, thank you for listening to How Objectivism Got Me, a wonderful relationship that has grown into a beautiful family. I, I rapidly gave up on objectivism after that because <laughs> it wasn't really getting me anything anymore. You know, right. I had this like one very specific use for it. And after that, everyone was like, you're such a jerk. Right. And like oh, a actually? jerk without the funny redeeming qualities, you know? So I yeah. just went back to being a regular jerk. So yeah, I feel the same. Like a lot of people actually that I know, it was like they needed it for one purpose or one time in their lives and then after it got them that it was better for them to let go of it and i think luli did a thread mm. on this um that's oh, how yeah. i started following her um, objectivism is also how i became friends with her like a long time ago <laughs> so i've been i've been trying to hustle luli to get on the fucking show she swears she will at some point but i've not gotten a yes so i feel like she's always really busy or she's kind of hard to get hold of sometimes She's also making videos on YouTube, like, she's doing it oh, yeah. daily for a bit, which is intense and productive. Flashback episode of, of Pot Piss. See, what happened with me and a few, many things happened with me and objectivism. One of them that happened is I remember asking so naively, it's so hilarious to look back, asking a philosophy professor if they had any classes on objectivism at the school. 
and getting oh, this God. very <laughs> this very understanding kind of like no oh, no <laughs> no, we do not have that. And it, and it, it's a little bit of a, like, wait till you find out why, like, cosmically. <laughs> like, just wait till you find out why. That, like, so many things cannot just be discussed. It, it, it's the whole, just, I don't even want to say why. Um, that was one thing that happened. The other thing that happened to me, again, I want, I want to be clear. I'm not an objectivist. I no longer believe in the ideology. I think it has major problems. It's not my thing. It was my thing. Um, but... Uh, at the time, it super was my thing, and the experience I had was over and over talking to people, and I said blah blah blah, Ayn Rand, and they said, oh, I don't like Ayn Rand, or oh, I don't like objectivism, or I don't think it's right, and I would press, and in over 75% of cases, easily, possibly over 80, 85, they had not read shit, literally zero, yep. just nothing, yeah. and it was like, that was the pill, which was like, wait, there are just people out there disapproving of things, not liking things, thinking they're smarter than you confidently, and they cannot know. They just are following a different fucking protocol. That pilled me on something. Like, that, like, woke me up a little bit to, like, the world is, does not work how I thought it did. Um, and I think it increased my confidence, honestly, because I was just like, no one's doing their fucking research. Yeah, when I would, when I was an objectivist, I don't think I ever met or spoke to a single person who had any coherent criticism of objectivism, but they mm. had plenty of criticisms of something that they thought Ayn Rand had said, but she had never said, or things that had nothing at all to do with objectivism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know so much about now because I've kind of forgotten a lot of shit, but I feel like I'm roughly still into that. I just don't, I, don't know. I could probably use it again. <laughs> so speaking of being selfish, um... Odds, we are due to watch K-dramas with Brooke right now. Oh, balls. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't realize it was getting so late. We, I mean... Yeah, we all, we also did go half an hour over our time, um, which I was cool with because we were chilling, and we got a lot of a lot of people chilling with us, and that is always fun to have. But we, we, we are at a good good stopping time if you have K-drama to get to that I'm apparently not invited to. Um, but... You're invited. You are <laughs> absolutely invited. You Join us. Oh, us oh, watching. oh, oh. Well, if you... Say so. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. No, you probably can't stream it because it's Netflix. But... Yeah, Netflix. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll check in about that. I do have to wait for my chicken to arrive. But uh, this was super fun. By the way, we, we the the audience is just like popping. We got twenty seven people in here, so dope. That's kind of pretty fucking hype, if you ask me. Um, yeah, it's been fun reading the chat. Yeah, totally. Um, any final thoughts, odds for 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 the crowd while we got them here? Uh, Ayn Rand is based. Isla, Isla, however the fuck her name is pronounced, is based. <laughs> Michael Kersey is a boomer. This is fun. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Free Lynn. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag free. Hashtag free Lynn. Free Riddle Doodle. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful night. We will be back next week with a new guest. I haven't even figured out whom yet, but as always, it's wonderful to have you. Have an excellent night.